I'm Yoshi Lomax, superstar attorney at law and fugitive. So, you're the famous Yoshi Lomax. Probably more infamous. I'm on the run from the federal government for crimes that I didn't commit. Gentlemen, I'm Deputy U.S. Marshal Sharon Starr. I'll be taking things from here. Not to mention being on the hit list of at least three of Miami's major crime bosses. I wanted to apologize in person for leaving so abruptly last night. Welcome back. That's Vladimir Kuznetsov, a Russian crime boss. He's been a suspect in over a dozen missing person cases. I mean, I didn't get here to be this successful for doing things the American way. I need a list of the jury for my case with Han Xiu. Oh, really? What's that worth to you? Oh, my God, you're such oh, a... Sh- Mr. Santana is to be released upon processing. So what do you know about Sheldon Chisholm? What do you want to know about him? I really need to know if you are going to take my case. I don't have time to play, Miss Lomax. Money is not a problem. You know anything about his case? It's being handled by agents in my field office. I've learned that in this game of life, in order to win, ready to dance, you gotta play dirty. You might look at me and see a beautiful, confident, successful woman. Congratulations, counselor. Yet another win. But underneath, I'm flawed. I'm broken. And I'm scared. So I have no choice but to run until I can find a way to clear my name. Miss Lomax is now considered a fugitive of the United States. Catching fugitives is my business, which makes her my suspect. You and your associates are relieved. Look. She killed one of our own. But I will not give up. All right, people, listen up. Get a picture of Miss Lomax out there so the public knows what she looks like. I will not give in. Okay. People, we got a game plan. Let's break and execute. I will not get caught. Time to go hunt. Director on Dollhouse Radio. Hey, what's up? It's Logan Browning, and you're listening to Real Talk with the Director on Dollhouse Radio. Real Talk. Hi, this is Alana Della Garza, and you're listening to Real Talk with the Director on Dollhouse Radio. Hi, I'm Diane Franklin from The Dollhouse Dead and Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures. You're listening to Real Talk with the Director on Dollhouse Radio. Hi, this is Molly Capri, and you're watching Real Talk with the Director on Blog Talk Radio. Hey, I'm Stormy Maya, and you are listening to Real Talk with the Director on Dollhouse Radio. This is Vicky Judy, Orange is the New Black, and I'm here with Real Talk. Yo, what up? This is Jay Ellis, and you're watching Real Talk with the Director on Dollhouse Radio. Keep it locked. Hi, I'm Rita Parks, and you're listening to Real Talk Radio with the Director. Hey, I'm Issa Rae, and you're watching Real Talk. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. And nothing less. What's up? Welcome to another edition of Real Talk with the Director and the Jedi Council. I'm the Director, and we will be with you for the next 120 minutes or so. Real Talk is brought to you each and every Monday by B2S Media. We broadcast live via the World Wide Web on YouTube.com. Slash IE Network TV, Facebook.com slash or whatever. Yeah. Facebook.com slash Real Talk Radio. And of course, Twitter via Periscope. That's also Real Talk Radio. 
Uh, it is now Monday. Today is the 18th of January. Rest in peace to my father, the Reverend James Clark, who unfortunately passed away on this day two years ago. And I just want to give a shout out and a, to up above to my, my pops. And um, so not to start the show off on a, you know, somber note. It's not a somber note because you know what? He's he's in better place than we are here right now. So, anywho, um, tonight we're gonna have a pretty cool show, man. We uh got some some things going on, man. We we we've been talking about the um the expendables, right? We've been talking about this briefly on different shows. Now, for people who may not know, the expendables is a female driven version of the hit film series the expendables which is produced by sylvester salone and um that series if you haven't seen it you need to go see it number two is if you if you haven't seen it though it's basically comprised of what would be considered some of the uh classic uh all of you know it's like a collage of or a combination of action heroes basically so it's like action heroes put you know all all in one movie doing missions some playing good guys some playing bad guys that's the expendables right if you know I'm not gonna sit here and explain the whole movie but go check it out it's a great series it's great for fan service, nostalgia. If you growing up from my era, if you grew up in the eighties, you know that the rivals for um, action was uh, Sylvester Stallone and of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Those were the two, they were the rivals, right? If you ever, ever dreamed of C.S. Stallone and Schwarzenegger in a movie together, which they've been in, they've been in several movies together now. But um, The Expendables is a movie that you would, you know, you, you like dream about seeing, right? It was always a, a good thing. So anyway, we're not here to talk about The Expendables. We're just trying to explain it to you so you can understand what The Expendables is. So The Expendables would be a female version of that. So you take some of the biggest female action hero or action stars and put them all in a movie and just have a bunch of stuff blowing up, a bunch of things going haywire, you know, just a bunch of action stuff going on. So we, we've been casting that show little by little in different shows. We're like, we kind of, me and Ralph kind of came with the same type of people who should be on it. So then we thought about this. We said, okay, we'll still cast that because we still need to get our official cast for that. But a lot of people, you know, pretty much have a, a, some, there's some locks. But, but then we thought about what if we took it to another level and did an Expendables, Expendables, the horror edition, meaning we take some of the best scream queens of you know of horror and everyone knows you know what the scream queen is that is a actress that has appeared in either multiple horror films in the genre or maybe appeared in one or two like big horror films in the genre um but more than likely most mostly it's it's connected to if you've been in multiple films in the genre so um imagine taking some of the 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 scream queens and putting them all in a movie with you know with against some of the biggest uh horror um some of the biggest horror villains you know what i mean so what well, we wanted we wanted to touch on that we talked about it a little bit um at the end of last week's show so we're like let's go with this week so also ralph made a few calls and was able to uh, get us a very special guest tonight, Miss Monique Dupree, a scream queen. <laughs> so it's only um, right that we get a scream queen on with us to talk about scream queen stuff. 
You know what I mean? It was just pretty cool. Uh, also, I just want to, you know, we just want to catch up with her. Last time I saw her was some years ago at the, uh, it was at one of the urban action joints that was going on. It was like the the um, the last dragon, one of those last dragon things that they did that I was there. I, did, I only made it to one. That's when I, I got a chance to meet Ty Mott meet some people from the from the uh from the movie and she was there we were there live i believe me and ralph was i don't know if kev was there but we were we were there broadcasting live from that from that event i remember that that was pretty cool um you know it was it was an experiment we tried it and <laughs> we like hey let's let's go you know we had our laptops there we were going hard man so we were broadcasting live from the the event and I remember uh, Monique sat in with us on that too. That was the last time I I saw her. Now Ralph catches up with her when he travels around. He catches up with her, and as you can see, she's she she was humble enough to give us a drop. So we put her drop in our opening of the show. So there you go, friend of the show, and she will be here with us tonight. Um, no Kev tonight. Uh, Kev is. He's out this week again, and uh, it's all good. I mean, just a little under the weather. He's all good. He don't got the C word. No C word. <laughs> He's just a little under the weather. <laughs> so um, we're, we're looking forward to getting Kev back. Uh, but it's me and Ralph, and I'm going to bring him in, and then we'll go from there. Should be a good night tonight, though. We want to definitely shout out everybody that's come through. Hold down the chat room, of course. My man Jimmy Ace in the building. Jimmy Ace is back on radio, podcast, uh, video, whatever you want to call it. He's now uh, with the IE Network, so please check out his sports show or sports and stuff. He talks the bench warmer show where they talk sports and stuff. Uh, right now, they they'll be airing on um, Saturday nights. I think. Till after the NFL playoffs, then they'll probably shift to uh, Tuesday nights. So should be good. Should be good. Real, real good. Um, every now and then I may pop up on that show. My brother, Heaven Hollywood, who is an avid sports fan. Uh, you know, matter of fact, one of the first broadcast shows we used to produce was a sports show called The Sports Fanatic. And... Um, you know, and we, we started off doing that some years ago. And then uh, he kind of shifted over and we started doing the Heaven Hollywood experience. So, we, you know, we've, we've done a few uh, radio shows, you know, together. Obviously, I usually produce them and, and he's the the uh, the on air, you know, personality. So, but yeah, so he's a big sports fan. Jimmy Ace is obviously a big sports fan himself. Well trained, trained at the Connecticut, the famous Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Uh, you know, he's a graduate of that uh, school, a uh, school that's you know where graduates have gone on to do do some great things, ESPN, WFAN, New York, stuff like that. So, you know, we have no amateurs here. And then, of course, it's me. I just, I just do me. <laughs> so and there you go. That's what's up. So uh please tune into that show on Saturday nights. We'll you know just stay in, just like and subscribe with the channel, the IE network, hit the bell. Do not just don't just like it, don't just subscribe. We want you to subscribe, but hit the bell so you can get the notifications and share, share these these uh shows. Share them, man. I don't care who you share them with your grandmother. They may not want to watch it, but share them anyway. So, boom, just throw it, throw it out to everybody. Just take the link, put it in your phone. Don't do this. You, you, I'm about to get y'all pissed off. People are gonna be pissed off at y'all. Like, take the link, put it in your phone, hit your contacts, and just <laughs> send it to everybody. <laughs> and uh, you know, don't come, don't come for me afterwards. Man. Like, Yo, Wes told me to send this to everybody. Now nah, I got people cussing me out and telling me to take them off the thread. Don't you hate that? I hate when that happens. When people just put me on a on a, a thread. Because like the, the phone threads, you can't take yourself off. You could put me on a Facebook thread all day. Cause I can I can leave that thread. I can get off of it. 
please do not put me in a phone text mess message chain because you can't pull yourself out of those. Only the person who created the chain can pull you out. So just saying. Public service announcement. So we'll talk about some uh, some movie news, of course, and we'll get it started. And Monique will probably join us about 10, 15 minutes or so, about 930 Eastern time. She should be coming on. We won't keep her long. You know, she's a busy woman. She's done a lot of stuff. She's doing a lot of things. She's already a renaissance woman. She does everything. She sings, she acts, she wrestles. <laughs> she's, she does it all, man. So um, models, a little bit of everything. So I'm here. You're there. You're watching Real Talk, of course, with the director. I am the director. What, my Jedi counsel with me if you don't. If you don't believe me, here you go. Hello, everybody. What's going on? Happy Monday. Monday. Two more. Hey, it's a good day. Two more days, and that jerk is gone. Dude, <laughs> he's gone. Oh God! Here See, it, it is two fingers. It's not. It's not one finger. It's it's two fingers. Two more yeah. days gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, this is this is this is this is true. This is true. So, um, yeah, you know, they spend the bells, which is uh something that I heard briefly. That the talks for that is back on, you know, that they they want to actually put this thing together because this this was something that they really wanted. And now that, to be honest with you, Ralph, I'm be hundred percent. Of course, I think the movie would have done fine in the theaters, but I think they might take advantage of the streaming craze that's going on and might just make it for like Netflix or something like that. And I could see Netflix or someone big like that getting behind it. And, and and doing it, you know what I mean? Well, uh, I think at this point in time, you know, I'm still not 100% convinced that streaming is the way, for right now, it's big. Am I still convinced that it's the wave of the future? I don't know about that right now. That's, for me, that's up there. But you can't deny the fact that right now, you're not, none of, none of you are out there going back into a movie theater anytime soon. But mm -hmm. with that being said, you still need new product. You still want to watch something new. You mm -hmm. know? So you don't have a choice. Is he either you could wait for something to come on HBO. You know, okay, all right. Or you have something to come on that's new to streaming. And I think streaming mm -hmm. for right now is the way to go. Uh, mm -hmm. If the movie theaters were still in theaters, I would say if you want to do an expend the bells, this mm -hmm. is a that's the movie theater. I mean, there's certain yeah. logistics with doing and expend the bells um, mm -hmm. because the truth of the matter is a lot of women in the in, in movies do not get a chance to really do an action movie. It's very few. Yeah. I mean, really, I'm going to say in the last, I hate to put it like in the last 10 years, mm -hmm. right? you have maybe, maybe 10. Maybe mm -hmm. tonight, really done action movies. Now you want to spend it to 20, 30 years, that list gets a little bigger, but it's not like yeah. it's not like you have the same comparison to men. Men, you have this long list of action heroes, but women you have a smaller one. And don't get me wrong, I think I think that is changing. And it certainly has been changing. You know, it just needs to speed up a little bit more, you know, to, to get up with the times. But um I think for right now, if you were gonna do an expend the bells, right? The property is still hot, it's still a good property. A spin-off for the Expendables. Expendables last month does not, we're not that far removed from the last one. And even mm -hmm. with that being said, we are not anywhere near removed from any of the people that were in it mm -hmm. um, to drop in the camera. I mean, they did the same, they did the same with Ocean 8. Ocean 8, last Ocean 13, I think was like 2010, 2011, somewhere around there. But they did the Ocean's 8, drop drop two of the members from Ocean's the Ocean series into the film. Had a reference to another one that still kept it relevant, like still in that world. I'm quite sure you can do that with the expendable bell, you know. And now you have um, some of the ladies out there doing big things in the action genre. Yeah, you know? I agree. Uh, uh, certainly Zoe Saldana, you know. Yeah. Uh, God, I can't think of her name off the top of my head. I know who she is, the, the woman that's in, um, that we always talk about, Mad Max. Um, Charlie's. Charlie's Charlie's if anybody, yep. Sophie Butella. Well, let's, let's, before, before we get into our our expend the bells, the uh, the, the horror, horror 
edition. Let's just let's just we know there's a few locks for the spend the bells if they're gonna actually do this movie. We know that Charlie Steron should be a lock in my in my opinion at least. Um, you know, if you're going by the formula of the expendables, you need to also have, you know, people we are we also say that um other people like uh what's her name? Um Linda Hamilton should appear in it. Uh maybe um it's funny because uh Sigoni Weaver could actually appear in both. She she can be in ours for Expend the Bells, the horror edition, because of you know Alien, which is you know hey you 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 used it in the horror genre right in in our tournament. Then you use Alien as yes, a horror. Did. Movie. Yes, you know what I'm saying? It, so, it is a straight up horror movie. It, it is a horror movie. Yeah, you know some people you know they can go you go with science fiction as well, but it's a horror movie. So, um, you know so she can be in both. But Sigourney Weaver, you could you could make a case for there. But like we said, people like uh, Charlie Theron, people like um, Scarlett Johansson, you know, people like you know Zoe could be it, Holly Berry, uh, and of course Angelina Jolie. That's a lock. Like she's a lock. You know what I mean? You gotta put her in in the expend the bells. And then of course you know keep into the formula we said before. You maybe want to throw like a martial artist in there or someone who's famous for martial arts or, you know, someone who can at least do martial arts because we were talking about all the different people, you know, maybe Lucy Liu, uh, Michelle Yeoh, you know, people like that. Um, we talked about Maggie Q, Fendables. We also talked about, um, we said Holly Berry. Then we say, you know, you want to put like a, a wrestler or a whatever, you know, a MMA person because that's kind of part of their formula as well. Um, so then you go with uh, Gina Carrera, you know what I mean, who's she's hot right now with the Mandalorian. That would be nice to put her in there. Um, I really, Ronda Rousey has got the name. I personally would put Gina over Ronda, but I wouldn't be surprised if they cast Ronda Rousey in one. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, she's got she's got the more because she's got the more marketable name, name more yeah, than the she's recognition. Got the more name. So yeah, I, she's got I, the name. I, I'm not, I'm but not Gina's gonna... a better actor because Gina has been putting some chops in now. You know, yeah, she, so yeah. she's the she, she's the better actor. She's got films. You know, uh, she, remember she had her <laughs> own film, which you know didn't really do well, but it actually had a lot of good actors in. They she, they surrounded her with a lot of good actors in her film. Her film was called. Uh, uh, hardwire or something like that, or yep. live, live, live what something like that. Yeah, hardwire. That's exactly hardwire. what's called hardwire. Yeah. And they they did hardwire. They put a. I mean, I mean, you had Steven Soderbergh, Oscar one. Let me phrase that. Oscar yep. one. Steven Soderbergh, direct, Soderbergh, Soderbergh directing it. I mean, it. they they really wanted. They were really trying to bring bring her into an action an action heroine. They yeah. really wanted to. You know, yeah, they, they did. did. And I, think, I don't know and why I think, it, did, it didn't do think, well because I think the, the I don't think the story was that great. Um, because you can get around the acting because most people who are not per se actors from the beginning, they're athletes at first. They're always they're always given the simple script to do. Everyone has done it from The Rock, Hulk Hogan, everybody. You know, everybody. You know, when they when they're first starting their career, as they're they're an athlete. You know, Bosworth, all these people that was, you know, athletes first that got into acting, you know, they're given the simple script at first. Right. And um, so right. The, the script itself really wasn't simple, but her role was as far as lines and dialogue and because she was just kind of like this machine. Right. Like this, this this thing, you know, she had some good fight scenes in there, though. There were some good fight scenes. Oh, yeah, she can. Gina Carano can thump in real life. She, yeah, she, she can, can really thump, thump in real life. So, she can so, fight. so her fight her fight scenes were really good. Um, you had uh Erwin McGregor was in it. Uh there was a lot of people. Wasn't um Antonio Banderas is in it too? Wasn't he in it somewhere? I think he might have made an appearance. I thought he did, maybe, but there was quite a few people in that film, like some notable names. They did not want her to fail. Unfortunately, the film really didn't do that well, uh, that, as far as I remember. I'm not sure how it did at the box office. Man, look that up. Um, 
how it did at the box office, but you know, it was it was a bomb. It is a yeah a bomb. Uh, yeah, and yeah. I don't think the I, I think the and, and 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 that might be part of what I was just saying is the fact that since you know the the, the time period of having a female action hero, it's still to me I would still say in this in this situation it's still in the dawn the dawn. No, it hasn't come full circle. Yeah, it was hay, not, I'm um, sorry, it's called haywire, not hardwire. Yeah, haywire. haywire. Right. That's what it just saying. hasn't come full circle. So, I mean, it just because we it's a casualty of the time, and we we just wasn't mm -hmm. ready for. It. Because even yeah. like I said before, even in the '90s, I mean, far in the yeah. between, you had action hero like like yeah, you had Laura Laura Croft for Anthony Jolie, but then before that, you had the Long Kiss Goodnight. And yeah. then you, and then when you say that one, then you got to start searching your brain as like, hey, what mm -hmm. other female really led an action movie? I mean, I mean, yeah, you could sit there and say Gloria back in 1980, you know, but that even though it was an action, it was really more of a drama. I mean, Sigourney Weaver's and more so an alien and aliens, certainly. Yeah. That's an that's a straight yeah. up action movie, right? But yeah. once again, then it's, it's far and few in between. And don't get me wrong, there were some women that were action in action movies, but they were not the lead, at least that I can think of. Yeah. You know, well, right now, that's why I say that we I think we had the consensus that uh Angelina Jolie, um, Charlize Theron, and maybe Holly Berry should be be locks for the extended yeah. bells. For like their that's their that's their Stallone. Um what's his name? Uh uh, Statham, Stallone, Statham, and whoever the other third Lundgren. person was. Like this. You can say Lundgren. L Lundgren, yeah. So that was like them, you know, and then everyone else can kind of fit in between. You got Zoe, you know, who's very capable of doing straight action. She had led her own action film. Uh, take her out of the uh, the MCU. She still had the action film with Columbiana. You know? Yeah, which, which was a good, a very, very underrated, but that was a good movie. Good yeah, it was movie. good. And you know why it was good? Because it was like the replacement for Matilda the Professional. That's pretty much what it was. Because, you know, the same guy wrote it and Matilda the Professional, as we all know, I'm not even going to talk about it. It's going to get me angry. <laughs> you know, basically it's a perfect know, example man. of it never came out because somebody is just being a pure jerk and and and, and being petty and uh, holding on to the rights or whatever to it so that he can't release a film called Matilda the Professional. We we got um what's her name? Uh damn it. Can't think of her name right now. Um the one you know played who played Ooh, Matilda. Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman. Exactly. That that would be right now if Natalie Portman came back and did Matilda the Professional where she is a hit woman doing the same thing as Leon the Professional that movie would go crazy. People go crazy for that. But old, yeah. you know, dude, dude. You know, I, I, uh, I just watched her movie the other day, um, Lucy in the Sky. Yeah. Um, and I'm sitting there looking at it, and certain things and how, like she, like the part where she's in the, in the convenience store, and she's like, um, um, five, because she's doing a countdown to blast off, and she's talking, and you see her when she was running in the end, and I was like, yo, man, I, I really need to see that. Um, mm -hmm. Nat Natalie, look, Natalie, Natalie, can I call you Natalie? I hope I can call you Natalie. I mean, I, we do so much. Oh, oh, strong Island, of course. Right. Strong Island, right. we, I mean, we, we have been through so much together, but if you happen to be watching or somebody watching this show knows Natalie Portman or her team, I implore you, um, please use your power. I mean, come on, you got an Oscar. You got to know somebody. <laughs> Wait a minute, and you know something? Even if Luke Besson can do it, you know who'd be a really good backup for Luke Besson? Quentin Tarantino. I yeah, I know, man, but you got it. You got Luke, Luke's got to write want, it, though, man. He, Luke's yeah, got to write if it. Luke, Luke's got to write Luke it. Quentin Ryan is my dude. You know, that's my guy. Quentin's my guy. But I'm just saying, Luke, I agree. Write it. If Luke, Luke writes write it, it, if Luke writes it, but Quentin directs it, oh yeah, it's I, a wrap. I would be it, 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 yo. That yeah. I'm dying to see that because I'm dying because to see it too. and I was looking. It, it was on TV like about two weeks ago, and I'm still saying, 
it's it's like it's calling for the sequel. Like like because yeah. she's a young girl she now she's up. grown. Now she's grown. Yeah. It was perfect. It sets it up perfectly. So it's all good, man. But we'll uh you know like I said, so we already know that they're the lock for the expendables. Um, you know, spend the I mean spend the bells. Uh, that edition. We we we're, we're going to after we get on the other side of the interview with our our guest tonight, who we're about to bring on. You know, that's going to lead us into our uh, Expend the Bells cast, um, the horror edition. And our guest should be part of that cast, actually. <laughs> so um, we'll bring we'll bring her on in a second. And, uh, you know, not even a second. Let's bring her on now. <laughs> so uh, next guest, of course, she is a, I, I call her a true renaissance woman. She does everything, man. She, you know, this is. This she's is like, she's so like. Much. I, I put it to her like like I'm gonna tell you this when I first when I met her right mm. about about a year after I met her she started saying you know I do horror movies I'm an mm. actress I got I got my own I got my own business you know I'm a mother mm. to at that time eight and Monique you still owe me mm. five dollars because I told you that that time you're gonna have another kid and you've had two more you still owe me five bucks <laughs> right but I started she started listening to all these things that she's doing and I said she she reminds me of that skit. From in living color, the Jamaicans like I'm a I'm a cook, I'm a baker, I'm a, like I kind of like that. You lazy lima bean, like, but she but she does she has she has so many jobs underneath her belt, yeah, and still pulls all of them off yeah. with the best that she can do. She she yeah. doesn't slack. She she's not lazy. She's like listen, it got to get done. I might I might lose some sleep. I might, you know, have to and, go, and but. I might miss a meal, but it got to get yeah. done. And the best thing about it, as we bring her in, the best thing about it is me being a mom, mama's boy myself, rest in peace, mom, she's a mother. Doing I'm all that, and she's Ten a kids. mother. Ten kids. <laughs> so, when, that's when she, when she that's, told me that, I was no, like. That's not even a mother. That's an earth. You call yeah. her the earth. You got to start. Yes. You just got to refer to her as the earth. Yes. You know what I'm yes. saying? The, the, earth. the foundation. Let's bring her in so we, you know, keep, we don't, let's embarrass her on camera. So <laughs> with no further ado. But just, but just remember when it's all said and done, right? I still know this woman in real life because she, she know where I live. She's going to be not going to yeah. be like, yo, what's that you said? <laughs> <laughs> what's going on, girl? Make Hi. sure you, how you doing? Oh my goodness. That was Welcome. quite an introduction. Um, <laughs> I've been listening to you guys and I was just sitting here agreeing and like, yes. And I said something about the professional and then you guys started yeah. talking about it. And I was like, yes, we're on the same page. Exactly. That. Yeah. The professional, I mean, since we just, you just brought that up, we were just talking as you were on backstage there. Um, you know, Luke Besson has to write it, obviously. But, uh, you know, there's been some sort of uh, pettiness going on with the producers of The Professional and never wanted to let him write the sequel. Actually, no, excuse me. He's written the sequel. He's already said it. Matilda, The Professional has been written. It exists. Mm -hmm. It just never came to the world because you got petty people. <laughs> we, need we need this. I I've always wondered, you know, because you knew obviously what she's going to do, but mm -hmm. I want to see this manifested mm -hmm. in reality. So I hope somebody, um, somebody's listening and will will make this happen, knowing that there's so many people that would would really want. see that. I would I would love to be a part of that that type of cast. Uh, you know, yeah, like, yeah. I would love to be a part of. That, that would be crazy, right? Maybe we need to do like. So. Yeah, maybe we need to do like what the fans did. The fans have shown a little power with release the Snyder Cut. You know, hashtag release the <laughs> Snyder Cut. Now the Snyder Cut is happening. So maybe make, we need make to, Matilda. Yeah, really. Yeah. yeah, hashtag make Matilda. We do yeah. have power. We we have power to make that happen. When you yeah, let's make it happen, man. Once they know that there's so many people out there that want it, and then the next thing you know, it's in the works. So right. maybe we should do that. Yeah, maybe we I, should. I need I need Matilda. I need Kill Bill Three with the little girl grown up. Oh my god. Yeah. I need yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're sure about yeah. that. older. You know, you yeah. I mean she's gonna come find her. Oh yeah. 
She's there. She and she invited her. She, she invited her. If you feel so if you still feel raw about this, <laughs> yep. I'll, I'll be waiting. waiting. <laughs> you know, and that's what it is. As soon as I get of age, as soon as I'm yep. ready, coming after you. She's ready. I think that actress now is like 20, right? Or something like yeah, that. Or she got 18, 19, 19, something like that. She's she's ready. And Quentin's the guy who would go back and get her. That's yeah. who he would use. He would say, okay, I'm going to get her. That's so speaking speaking of cast, we we definitely, we talked about doing the Expended Bells, the horror edition. We just wanted to put a spin on it, right? Where we take like Scream Queens and, you know, you put them in the film. So, you know, we definitely, you definitely need to be in that cast. <laughs> you know what I mean? I but see, they're like, well, who are they fighting? That's well, it's the horror edition. So they're fighting the, the famous horror villains, you know, the Jasons. Yeah. Now see now now, that, now right now, see right there. That's the interesting question. Who would they be fighting? Because of course we know the people that certainly would be there. You know, you got Jason, Freddie, yeah. Michael Myers, and then maybe yeah. Leatherface and Chucky. Okay, yeah. but who else would you really throw up in there for them to take on? I got to I got to throw Candyman in there. Yeah, yeah. Candyman. Candyman. He's about you know they they about to you know put the new film out you know so the name's gonna be back in people's minds you know what I mean so mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I put yeah, I put yeah. down Candyman and then and then I was looking through stuff. I said I also will put in there Jacob Goodnight from See No Evil. Oh yeah, um, that's a good. I, would, I mean, it's it to me it's easy. It would be easier to find like these characters, like because we think of the top. Uh, you know, horror film, mm -hmm. but we forget about some of those other ones that mm -hmm. had like great villains in it. So that's yeah. your part to me. The hardest part would be really trying to figure out the Screen Queen edition. And mostly because there's a lot of women that mm -hmm. they don't consider themselves to be a Screen Queen. So mm -hmm. the question to you would be, would it be consider themselves to be Screen Queens or people that mm -hmm. we say well you've been in you know this horror yeah. horror or a scream queen yeah that's a good that's a good that, question that, i think the scream part. i think the scream queens honestly has kind of been decided by the fans yes. <laughs> you know, we're, like, we're the ones who's you know another woman of color up in there that i feel like would would uh be a badass that i don't think people think about would be rachel true i would mm -hmm. definitely put her in there from the craft yeah I, the craft a good fit and it would just be me and her representing the women the color. So uh <laughs> <laughs> but, then, but, then, but then if you do that then you forget I mean you know she hasn't done a, a horror movie in a uh, movie but she was on the TV show Screen Queen which is Kiki Palmer if we're gonna say a woman of color. I mean I, you gotta something that's she's you the show. I had she's to the show. because you know like there's other people also there's a lot of independent um you know, well, when you talk about Scream Queens, it's not always mainstream, right? But mm -hmm. you have all of these badass Scream Queens that actually, like, you know, do their own stunts or, you know, mm -hmm. action. Um, uh, what is her name? Cara Cardinal. She did her own stunts. Uh, she's an independent um, Scream Queen like myself. Uh, who else? Deneen Melody. There's so many out there. Like if you look mm. up, you know, she's mm. an acrobatist, a, a, a circus performer. She mm. does all of this crazy stuff with her body. She's a whole badass. Like I would right. people that I know could maybe do their own stunts and, and, and really take the action and make it believable, make it real uh, on top of being good actresses that people don't mm. know exist. Yeah. So I would think uh, that's that's a good point. I, well, we know we know like just like we said about the expend the bells, the action edition, we know that Joe, you know, Jolie, Theron, Barry should be locks, right? In there. Um we have you in we have you in this. Um we also uh you know Jamie Lee Curtis should be a lock in the oh. Scream Queen edition, obviously. Um, you know. Who else? You want to say Nev Campbell? You want to put Nev in there? That she was in Scream. <laughs> you know? She is in the craft. Back to the yeah. other in list. The what about Demi Moore? Hmm. In action. Yeah. Ooh. Demi Moore. Hmm. Forgot that's, about. That's, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, good, that's a good one. I like her see, too, see, man. See, see, you, you know what you two you did? Now, now I got to go back and think about this. Who we do for the expensive <laughs> bell? You yeah. know, damn both. Yeah, she just do a damn. She just do a she monkey. Do a rich, monkey you know? rich. Yeah, you know, I mean, because because like I yeah. like I said last week, um, when 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 China was still alive was when this whole started talk about expensive bells. Right. You know, and that she was going to they wanted her to be a part of this movie, and mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, that's. And then you know she passed, and the, and the but but even before she passes, the project kind of like got put on the shelf. It was like, you no, know, nothing else yeah. happened, and yeah. I don't ever knew why, and even and and. To this day, they've never re-picked back up this project, but it's a project that's calling. And I'm going to take that word back. It's a project that needs to be made. It It needs needs to be made. made. Right. Because because I still think that now the women in action movies, strictly action movies, is starting to come, starting to come a little harder. And they're not just a girl that's like, oh, crying and all of a sudden get a gun and like, oh, I don't know how to, they're like, look, 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 I don't don't want that six shooter to get a Glock. Give me the AK forty seven. Give give, yeah. give me a bow and arrow, and let's start wiping some people out. Mm-hmm. It, it needs to be done, you know. Hollywood, you, you and, and now Hollywood, you're always talking about, you know, people. Uh, we have always said in the show, there's no original ideas. Well, he, here's your idea. Here's your idea. Man, you know, this is make like it really take the ball and run with it, man. This is make it happen. The, the foundation's been laid out by Sly, so just take the take the you know take it a ball and run with it, man. You know, and I, I, I like, I like the little idea we, we, we came up with with the with the scream edition, the scream queen edition. Cause that would be kind of interesting. I mean, they may not take all of the villains and put them in there, but it would be kind of cool, though. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? I think that that would be really cool. I would love to see something like that. I mean, but those <laughs> sometimes you have to um, take the reins and kind of try to do things yourself. That is not a project that I would try to take on because I. Already- <laughs> Too many things I'm doing already. Let me tell yeah, you. Exactly. I'm gonna tell, tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this, and I mean this. You know, today is January eighth. Let me hit one of these big lotteries. That movie's getting made. I don't care yeah. who I gotta get. That movie's getting made. For yeah, real. It, it needs. It needs to be. It, it needs to be on all levels. Speaking of, I know you got a lot of things that you're working on. I wanted to get to a little bit of that as well. And um, but you know, back on the Scream Queen thing. Now we said that it's pretty much general consensus that that's kind of like the fans kind of like give that moniker to you. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, how did you feel about when you when you when you ended up being put into that that uh that realm of Scream Queen? I mean, you know, it, it's to me, I think it's you know automatic when when you when you've survived so many horror films. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I consider or not. <laughs> this day consider it an honor. And I always say in interviews, um, over time, the term "scream queen" has been given given a bad name, a bad rep. But mm. uh, I don't see it that way. Uh, mm. I see um, these women like myself that are constantly interwoven into the horror genre, and mm. you know, we are strong, we are powerful. Yeah. It's not just to trip and fell and get mm-hmm. murdered. You know, I'm one of the scream queens that usually plays the killer. Mm-hmm. Oh, so I'm not yeah. I, to the point where I'm begging. I'm like, just let me be the good guy just once. Like, let me. <laughs> Can I throw some punches? Like, what's up? <laughs> I really yeah. see it as an honor and I hear yeah. scream queen proudly. Um, yeah. There was some argument as to whether I was the first black scream queen. And I think that all of the, the first type things doesn't actually mean the literal first yeah. one. Um, yeah. I guess people saw me as the first notable scream queen that said I'm a scream queen and went around mm-hmm. doing horror films and actually promoting it because you don't mm-hmm. see a lot of women of color doing yeah. it. They just, you know... I mean, I know women that have done horror. I mean, Jaretta. Jaretta is mm-hmm. one who's done Italian uh, horror, and mm-hmm. nobody ever really thinks about her. Right. They think about yeah. it. But then again, like I said, I have a big mouth. I go around and scream to the rooftops, I am a scream queen. Because That's good. Of that, yeah. I love that title. I, I take it with high honor. How did you, um, I mean, what, what really attracted you to horror? Like, why, you know, 
is is that i mean it, it it may sound like a stupid question to ask you is that like your favorite genre but i mean we don't know we have to ask you still <laughs> it's, it's my favorite genre uh well between horror and comedy because okay. I didn't know whether I was going to be a comedian or mm -hmm. <laughs> involved in horror. I don't know why I thought I was going to be a comedian, but like I saw Lucille Ball and I was like, I'm going to be her. Mm -hmm. I can't do this. I'm going to do that. So I think what attracts me is the, uh, the suspense. Um, I also, I am kind of a morbid person. I've always been kind of a morbid person. I love the mm -hmm. blood and guts thing. I fell into Japanese horror because I, I love Takashi Miike and mm -hmm. I love his blood splatter and his sick, sick mind. And I think Quentin yeah. Tarantino took a lot of Takashi Miike. Yes, yeah, she did. And his influences with his yep. film, I love blood and gore, but that's not the only type of horror that I like, but that's I think that's what kind of attracted me to it. Mm. Any horror, any horror guys out there that, or, or or gals that you want to work with that you haven't worked with yet? Someone like like a James Wan or someone like that. Um, you mean like at all as far as indies or you know who's out there? Or... Yeah, at all. Yeah. Well, I have a lot of talent that I want to work with, but mm -hmm. I would love to just I just want to be in a Quentin Tarantino film. Yeah, I just yeah. want to be in a Quentin Tarantino film. I want it to be something, you know, like what happened uh, when um, from Dust Till Dawn. Like, yeah, you just have this mass murder movie, which I'm also kind of obsessed with serial killers and mass murderers. But that's mm -hmm. what thing. And then it <laughs> all of a sudden turns into this horror film with vampires, just like that, just as as fast as you snap your finger. That was I so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quentin's, my man. Quentin's my dude, man. Quentin, and if I can get a chance, even if he goes, okay, I'm gonna put you in the film, just walk by. I'll, I'll be good with that. I'm, I'm okay. I mean, I want more, but I'm yeah. good, you know. But you, but you would might, think that, was, that was like a good start. Like if that, if you did that, like you just did a quick cameo, and he said, hey, that hey, was my Quentin, start. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Quentin. He's like one of my, uh like influences as a director and um you know he's that dude though he's the, he's he would ask you he, he he will ask you to do like something small look what he look what he did sam jackson was not even really in kill bill but he's credited in it and he was in it for like two seconds you know what i mean but that's mm -hmm. what it, you know that's why hey i just need you to play the, the organ player in this, this film you know can tell me to do whatever and I'm going to do it like I'm starring in the movie. That's right. But that's well, how you know. you get down no matter how small or big your part is like you're supposed to put everything into it. And I just really want to work with him because there's a lot of uh uh actors and actresses that I would like to work with uh, not just related to the horror genre because mm -hmm. I remember meeting Anthony Hopkins and just thinking she's oh, man just need to do a movie with you. Can I just be a victim oh, at some point in time? <laughs> I'm gonna eat your, I'm gonna eat your kidneys with a fava bean. Yeah, fava beans <laughs> and a nice Chianti. It's, I'm glad you brought that up because should, should Hannibal Lecter be in that movie we're talking about? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he, no, he could, actually, he could, he could be the guy that's like the leader. Yeah, like the leader, because he's the intelligent one, right? He's that would, the doctor. Yeah. That would be awesome. That would be real awesome. He he needs to be the the main guy that they're they're plotting against or trying to get away from. <laughs> yeah. the guy that that basically uh, heads up all the other bad guys. Because yeah, exactly. He's got the mind. He's got the mind for it. Yes. He's the, he's the strategic dude. I don't really know anyone else that, you know, everyone else are more like brute. They're like brutes. You know what I mean? Everyone else are more brute strength. And, he would be like you know. people from Birds of Prey, the Oracle. He would. Yeah, he'd be the Oracle. Yeah. yeah. It's like that, that would be him. And he'd, he'd have everybody all messed up. You know, I had this idea for this film. It's actually, I didn't have a, for lack of a better, uh, title for it it was called switch and it was about this uh 
this these two killers uh it was about this one dude who's like a if you want to think about um um american psycho right there's one that's like him he's like very pristine and you know whatever but he's also he's more like dexter he's like very neat oh, yeah. with his killing right and then you got the other one who's like leather face he's like yeah you know so like the the pristine guy goes and he gets actually gets kidnapped by the leather face guy you know what i mean and he's like you're right. so it's like a a, a chess game because he's trying to uh basically um you know, outsmart him. Say, yeah, you know, you don't know how to kill people. You, 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 you're gonna get caught. You know, you, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying you, you're so messy. You're gonna get caught. This is, can you do a kill like this? He's just basically trying to stall so he can get out and kill him himself. It's kind of weird, but anyway, I like. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I'll switch. So that's, that's what it is. But um, yeah, man, that's. Uh, I, I think that um, that that killer to me, the. Uh, the reason why I brought that up in the first place is the strategic or the smart killer has always been um, interesting to me. You know what I mean? Been, I, in the I wholeheartedly agree. And I think that <laughs> uh, drew me into like, you know, watching stuff like Dexter since you, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, is, you know, how he killed American Psycho. He was just, he really was. Crazy. <laughs> he was crazy. He was a psycho. He was yeah. just a, a well-dressed psycho. <laughs> but Dexter, I love um I love characters like that and how they um you know delve into how they obviously had time to like really delve into the character because it wasn't just a movie. And yeah. I love that series because you got to learn how his mind works and then you mm -hmm. started to be able to not predict but go, oh boy, this gonna mm -hmm. set him off. I wonder mm -hmm. how he's gonna kill so and so not. I wonder, you know, if, but like, if, oh yeah, how? How is it right? You know. Yeah, I thought I thought it was brilliant. I thought Dexter was brilliant. And when when I when I first came up with the concept for that movie, I remember someone told me about Dexter. They was like, you know, that kind of sounds like this show Dexter. I had never heard of it, and I was like, oh really? He's like, yo, you know, when I told him about my the the you know the clean killer, you know, the strategic one, and they were like, yeah, it reminds me of this show Dexter, and that's what got me into it. So I watched Dexter. And I got hooked, you know what I mean? And it's just like, yo, this is this is awesome. The way he his mind worked and how he, you know, how they actually made him justify why he does what he does. Yeah. <laughs> he has to kill because, you know, X, Y, and Z. Yeah, he has to kill. And it 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 it, it serves his craving. What I saw was yep. I I didn't see the the character that he was trying to portray, I just looked at him and said, "That's Dexter. I wonder if he's, gonna, <laughs> you know, kill somebody." <laughs> but it wasn't that kind of movie. It was a comic uh, movie. But yeah, some 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 things you just stick with. He's Dexter to me. I'm sorry. Like I see him. Um, his name is Michael. I forgot his name. Michael C. Something. Um, yeah, Michael uh, C. Yeah. Hall. Yeah, yeah, Michael C. Hall. Italy. Yeah. I was about to say it eludes me. I met um that was his girlfriend at the time, the one that played his sister. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's his actual girlfriend in the real life. Or oh, it was at the time, yeah. It was. Which I'm, was weird, but yeah. Even though she wasn't in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Now they're bringing it back for another season, I see. I know. I'm which is interesting. Which is because I was a I was a little I I was a little personally, I didn't really like the last couple of episodes. But I see what they were doing, obviously, because now they're bringing him back. So they they didn't kill him because they wanted to leave that door open, I guess, to possibly bring him back. So that's cool. Spoiler alert, everybody. They didn't kill him. So, <laughs> <He's> <laughs> not, but uh, I mean, um, that's cool. So I know you 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 know I know you you're pressed for time. You don't have a lot of time. Uh, some of the things that you're working on. I mean, when when you look up your IMDb, it's like filled with stuff <laughs> you know like recent stuff yeah <laughs> so uh that's good you 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 work in during you've been working during the pandemic and all of that that's that's what's up but that's the uh, the big boon people got creative with uh mm -hmm. with their filmmaking yes. and it was like all of a sudden i had gone from no work no work in mm -hmm. terms of acting because i was doing all this wrestling stuff yeah all of a sudden people contacting me. I said, well, wrestling is out guys. So if 
you know, you want me to work on a project, just let me know. And then I had gotten an influx within days. Mm. I said, Holy crap, people still want to put me in films. But mm -hmm. they had me uh, film my, uh, all of the movies except for one I got to be on set for, uh, mm -hmm. called The Mickey and the Trick, uh, directed mm -hmm. by Tom DiNucci. And I also got to choreograph my own fight scene. I'm very, very oh, proud nice. of that. Sure. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. The stunt coordinator said, well, you're a wrestler. Figure out what you want to do and then show mm -hmm. me. And I was fighting Saint, who is my ex. So that, oh, that was really easy. I was like, oh, yeah, we can get real down and dirty with this. <laughs> uh, no holes barred. <laughs> no holes barred. No hold that's bar. what's up. <laughs> oh, you didn't do the dishes last night. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. <laughs> and the next thing I know, I was... um. I got to be director of sorts as well because, of course, filming your own scenes, it's yeah. people don't understand. It's not just as simple as well. To me, it's an art. It's not just as simple as the camera right there, and then you just do stuff. Mm -hmm. I get mm -hmm. angles. You know, I you know I cover everything. I make sure yeah. continuity, so I take pictures yeah. of everything in case something is messed up and I have to go back and redo mm -hmm. it. All of that. You got to blocking. You got to block stuff. You got to yeah. You got to do all of that, man. Yeah. It's, it's, so it's the art. Uh, I filmed a lot of those kind of scenes. Uh, Saint filmed one of my scenes for me uh, for one movie I did. And then two other movies I filmed myself. And then two additional movies, Tommy Dreamer uh, filmed them for me while I died. Cool. So. so, yeah, you know, it, it, like you said, when you just, when you first started, uh, crisis sparks creativity. Yes. That's what happens. Yes. Crisis sparks creativity when you are, and, and that's, I mean, obviously even pre pandemic, when you're in a situation and you have certain challenges that you may run into in a production, it sparks your creativity to try to get through it and get it done. Absolutely. You know, instead of just falling back, like I ain't going to do nothing no more. You gotta, you gotta grind. So the crisis sparks the creativity. So now you're, you're, you're playing, you're playing producer, director, and you're doing all your choreographing. I, <laughs> what, I, what I tell you, I'm, I'm wrestling, motherhood, director, <laughs> choreographer, but, you know, stunt woman, businesswoman. I got like 19 <laughs> jobs. <laughs> and I, I, I go back and forth and back and forth. And I think that's why I love working behind the scenes and wrestling so much. Yeah. Because it's almost like me managing life at home with yeah. kids. I except I'm working with wrestlers, so no big, no big deal there. Yeah, exactly. I slam my kids all the time. No, so <laughs> <both laughs> wow. Actually, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I got, I got, I got no comment for that one. You, 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 wow. Uh, I've been trying to get, um, hopefully, like get a job with another company because you know House of Hardcore yeah. hasn't been running shows. Mm -hmm. I, was like, I hope Impact or AEW or somebody, mm -hmm. need, uh, somebody in production because I don't yeah. know, need to be, you know, a valet. Right. I love, I love the the craziness when you're yeah. in back and you you're doing so much that you don't even realize how much time is going by, and then you get. Yeah. To Back and watch, you know, all of the craziness. You see what you put into it. Like you see the show being put together. You you see it happening. And you're like, wow, I helped to do that. I love that feeling. So yeah, if I can, it's, it's really. I I I I've always respected it, but I I found a newfound respect for it, of of the production of it because, uh, you know, um. Uh, my my school is a uh, full sail university here in um in Central Florida, and um, they tape NXT there. And um, you know, I, I I was lucky enough to you know go behind the scenes and help out because they get the students to actually help film stuff there. You know, part of the 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 whole team and stuff. And I mean, just looking at the 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 madness, like you just said, the craziness that goes on, just trying to get to deliver what what. The people see, it is uh, you have you have to have respect for it. So I, I can understand. Yeah. You know, in the Jacksonville would... tomorrow, by the way. Um, oh, okay. Nashville now, so I'll be in Jacksonville just uh, to go to um, the AEW show. So okay. See what happens. That's what I'm saying. So you are you traveling right now? I know you said that they're not doing like wrestling shows, but are you traveling with 
you know, are you doing any wrestling stuff or any appearances? I, or? Yeah, I hadn't been doing any wrestling stuff, but I had I was traveling uh, a little bit with uh, with mm -hmm. so I'm okay in, uh, in Nashville, and I it's I, I'm doing more work from the hotel room that I think <laughs> than I think I'd be doing if I were there, which has been really crazy because um. I had to shoot a couple of things. I had to do two photo shoots uh, for stuff that I have up and coming. Um, I'm going to be on some rolling papers soon. So uh, <laughs> just rolling like paper. that's so so I can smoke you. So you have to smoke. Yeah, I'm smoking. I'm gonna start smoking. <laughs> I'm <gonna> start smoking. <laughs> Wait, okay. Yeah, right? I never used to smoke, but after my hysterectomy, I didn't want to take. Mm -hmm. uh, any of the drugs that they were yeah eating. so i had started eating like gummies and stuff like that um edibles and i i, I know a guy that has his whole whole thing going on in seattle and so he said well how would you like to be on my rolling papers and uh, some of my other merch and i was like Psh, i would yeah. love it so that's funny whole other market right there that i just tapped into no, and you just killed it. That's what's up. up. So <laughs> I'm doing the shoot for that. So I started shooting for that. And okay. I get the concepts and looks down and the things that he wants so I can send that to him. He has a book out and everything. So like when I say that I'm doing a little bit of everything, I try my hand at stuff. Like I couldn't afford to go get tattoos because of the pandemic and all of that stuff. Yeah. So I started tattooing myself. <laughs> uh, I bought a tattoo machine. <laughs> Look at Ralph's face. <laughs> He's it. like, he writing down another job. He's like, mm -hmm. yeah, tattoo artist. Body, and I've done like five tattoos. This is Braille, and it means survivor in Braille. Oh wow! Oh, nice. So, Ooh, that's so, crazy. That hurt. <laughs> I'm it sure it did. Hurt. Especially in that in, in that part of your body on the on the hand right there. Yeah, I can imagine. I've been tattooing <laughs> the top of my foot as well, but my my. Oh. Is that I love to create. I love to put things together. I'm not afraid to try new things. Mm -hmm. I just, I love creativity. I love entertainment. I love expressing myself. And I was like, well, I don't think I'll ever have a, a, a nine to five job. So mm -hmm. I have my tattoos here. Um, <laughs> what does now, that how mean? Did that, how did that, that, that mean something? How did that happen? Did that hurt too? Yeah. yeah. That looks like it hurt. Especially up here, that hurt. That looked like I'm more hurt. curious yeah. is how, how did you hold the needle with your hand like this? How did you hold it in place to to oh, do it? That's because I'm I, I had to have some talent for that. It's just a matter yeah. of <laughs> tattooing yourself, and then like you have to make sure you stretch the skin to make sure it's you know uh, it's it's a lot. I didn't know how complicated tattooing. Be. I've been watching like YouTube stuff, and then it's just been trial and error on my body, so. Wait, hold on, hold on. You, you did not just say you learned how to do tattoo by watching YouTube. I, I, I know, yo, YouTube I know University, you man. YouTube <laughs> University, you can, yo, bro. You can learn everything. You can learn how to change oil on YouTube. You can learn how to do whatever. I myself on the needles, uh, what yeah. needs to use for shading and for line work and which uh, cartridges were better because I have the tattoo pen. So I'm using cartridges currently as opposed to the needles. And I literally watched maybe four hours of videos of different mm. people and bought all my little equipment. And for the tattoos that I've done now, it's already paid for itself. Like, I don't know how many times over. So wow. I don't, I'm not, I don't expect to do any like big tattoos, but I can yeah. do leopard prints. My mm -hmm. my dots, my flowers, like little things like that, and I'll still go. I'm getting a kendo stick on, like mm -hmm. right where my TD is on my hip. Yeah, I'm not doing that at all. I'm going. Oh, to you're gonna get someone to do that, yeah. Now, do you feel confident enough to to to, to throw some ink on other people? You know what I'm saying? Start start collecting some checks doing it. You know. Well, there you I go. Had three people in my household ask me to. They want to be my guinea pigs to to be tested and i said well let me just get a little bit better and make sure i'm you know a little more confident and once i am i'll try little things um like saint was like 
yeah, I want you to practice on my back. And I was like, what if I mess up? He's like, then I'll go to a tattoo artist and get something over it. And I'm like, yeah, fix. yeah well, that's, that's good. You got a chance. To All right. You got a guinea pig. I got, I got, I have a, <laughs> I have a marketing, uh, I got a marketing hook for you, for the roller papers. Want Monique Dupree in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm, a, I'm I'm not I'm not even gonna say nothing because because I'm trying. See, I'm trying to keep it clean. I'm trying to keep it clean. So I'm not. That's clean. Clean. I'm talking about rolling papers. It's not, it's not a, where's the lie though? <laughs> I would totally be in their mouth. I mean, yeah, I'm saying that's the, what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> now you want you want yeah, you want to feel the sort of people like that did you say it. You always, like, hey. the, you always wanted to lick the gator, so. If you always wanted to, <laughs> yeah. If you always wanted to. <laughs> Ralph, be a dirty. See? I know. See, that's what I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to be clean. I'm trying, cause I'm trying to be clean. Uh, clean, clean, hard. clean. See, no. I was very clean with it. I just said, what, Monique, to be in your mouth? <laughs> oh, goodness. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, so that's just, a great uh, like I said, we we uh, as promised. I'm not gonna keep you too long, but um, what 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 do you got? I know you said you got you got Jacksonville coming up. What's what else is coming up that you can speak of? Uh, that you well, got? I, I'm, I mean, I see like one, two, three, four, five, like six or seven films that's in development that you're working on. Some say pre-production, some say filming. What did I do? Because I can't remember the names of anything. <laughs> I had a trying 24 hours, but um. But I, I saw one where you have here. Uh, you, I guess you did this film already, but the character said, "Miss Cleo, are you actually playing Miss Cleo?" Like, call me now. Like that. Was <laughs> no, I'm not. And that would be so funny. I believe that that was my name for. Dude, that would be so funny, though. That would have been great. I, that's what I thought when I saw it. I was like. Oh shit! She's gonna play Miss Cleo. I remember that. I remember that. I remember those say, "Call me, call me." I can't forget that woman. All the oh. time on no. every other commercial was was yeah. call me now. I'm like, oh, yeah, call me now. Yo, yo, they need to do a biopic on her because you know that whole scandal that happened with her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Maybe they'll call you for the biopic. <laughs> Call me that. What else? What else? What else? You what, what? What else you got coming for you? That they just like you know when they're like, oh, I want you to be this character. And a lot of the films that I did recently, I didn't even know what the my characters' names were unless it was mentioned mm -hmm. while I was you know portraying whatever it was that I was portraying. So that was kind of crazy. And then one film I got to name myself, which was oh. it in a trick. Uh, you can tell of that name. That's a great name. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, the guy that played in Mask, the evil guy, I can't remember his name. I yeah, yeah. got to play opposite him. So that was really, really cool. He's a, a really down to earth guy. He doesn't have social media. But, um, mm -hmm. and of course, this was during the pandemic. So we had to get a COVID test the day of to make sure mm -hmm. it was good. And then we had to wear our mask on set until we were yeah. filming then you just take the mask down. But I'm really excited about that movie because I got to choreograph and do my own fight scenes and show mm. people just how how badass I can be. So I think that when that comes out, that'll be a little introduction to show people that I can do physical stuff as well. Stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's, that's your way of showing it. I mean, it, it would be, it's something that, I don't know. That doesn't seem. That's not a surprise to me. Like you know, what I mean? because you already do the physical stuff with with the wrestling and stuff like that. So, and we've seen it's been historical that wrestlers make good transitions to to doing those type of films and their own stunts and stuff like that. You mentioned about you know filming, doing the COVID test stuff like that. How has it been during this pandemic? You know, um, if, if you, have you been? Uh, you said you had to do one for that, and I know a lot of them. You say you've been filming like on your own, but have you been running into that a lot? Where you, because you know, it's like a new protocol now. Actually, tomorrow I'm taking the uh, the test the test for um, COVID uh, uh, the COVID uh, officer yeah. compliance officer oh, position. Wow. Like, it's like certification for it. I'm yeah. doing that tomorrow. You know what I mean? Because before I start shooting again, I want to have that under my belt. You yeah. know what I mean? But, you know. So, have you been running into a lot of that? Or yes, I have been. As a matter of fact, before I 
went to Jacksonville, I had to go take my COVID test today. It was just kind of weird because I'm in Nashville and I don't know, you know, Nashville all that well. So I had to look it up and look up a place that did it without appointment. And mm -hmm. so, well, you, you kind of made an appointment 24 hours in advance and I had to go to the CVS and they're like, Park, yeah. and I'm like, yes, I yeah. an Uber, so I'll just stand in this parking space and wait for somebody to call me. Like, it was a whole experience, but yeah. of course, I'm negative. I usually test twice a week in case I get mm -hmm. called for a film or a project or something with wrestling. That's smart. That's smart, That's smart that you do that. You're, you're yeah. being proactive and staying ahead of it. Yeah, because yeah. I, I also don't want to ever bring anything like that home to my family. I have grandbabies um, at home, you know, yeah. my, my kids, uh, some people with breathing problems, Saint has issues uh, with high blood pressure and stuff. So I don't ever yeah. want to bring yeah. that. I always uh, just take a test anyway, but I had to take one before going uh, to Jacksonville. And then I took one right before I got here because I knew that I was going to be around wrestlers and they yeah. have to take one, you know, so I wanted to make sure that I had, mine and that I was good to go, which, which I am. Cause I'm super mm -hmm. like my bag. I was talking about this on Twitter and Facebook mm -hmm. I have two 50 pound bags. Like I, I fly Southwest. So literally one bag was 50.0. I don't know how I did that, but I was on point. And then the <laughs> other was 49.5. So I'm like, I have to pack the exact, exact same way. So what I did was I took pictures. They probably hate you. <laughs> Like her, <laughs> like her again. <laughs> she back, and this she is the like point. Probably saying, they're probably saying, "Wait a minute, she's back." Usually, when people have the bag that's heavy, when they go and they come back, that's a little bit lighter. It's the same weight. Like they don't. Yeah. What you got in there, body? I'll tell yeah. you. I brought. I I brought a bottle of wine with me that I drank quickly. So I don't have that, but then I had to buy soap. So, you know, I, I don't know. I just even don't know eventually. my bag is going to end up heavier or lighter or what, but I just know I'm not paying $75 for my bag being two or three yeah. pounds over. So we're not playing those games. So Miss Monique took some pictures and I said, I'm putting everything right the hell back the way it was when I packed. <laughs> <laughs> I was good. Yeah. I don't even know yeah. what you think, that, but I'm like looking at the picture. I'm like, no, this was here. Wait, I think this is over here. I literally, <laughs> I hope I did it right. <laughs> wow. I don't, even, I don't even know what to say. I don't That's even know what to say. See, I have to be efficient because I'm not paying somebody $75. Oh, no, that's crazy. <laughs> Just uh, you know, a couple of pounds over uh, in a bag. See, I used to be able to go to a curbside check-in and slip the guy pen if it's over and he would just give me a wink and let me through. Now yeah. I have to go to the front to drop the bags off and all the women are like, yes, yeah, a pound over. You need to get something out. Try your jeans. And so I don't I don't have that power. <laughs> Yo, actually, one time one time I was coming when I was working construction, I was coming back from West Virginia. And I had these brand new steel toe boots and then pushed my bag over like by five pounds. And I had to get rid of them. You put them on. I had, no, I had I had sneakers on, so I couldn't put them on. And my Switch. book bag, my Oops, book bag was in the back. Nah, my book, my book bag was packed to the rim, so I couldn't, I didn't have any extra space on me to like slip them in something. I mean, they weren't they weren't expensive. They were just the fact that they were just new because I got them like it was like and then our job ended. So I only had them for maybe like three weeks so yeah. i mean I, w I was just i was upset but i wasn't like devastated like oh my god i gotta get rid of these boots now they were like timberland steel toe boots and i might have been mad like nah nah yeah, we that's when you got something out. but they were yeah. like walmart <laughs> so, i don't care sizing because people don't realize how much cardio is involved in traveling just to mm -hmm. put it into perspective my all three of my bags were a total of 125 pounds. I weigh up 27 pounds, mm -hmm. so I basically had 20 some odd pounds on my back, like a hiking mm -hmm. book bag, and these yeah. two big roller bags. I'm basically carting my weight around in clothes and ring light that I'm using. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. 
all of my other stuff. And when I got here, I was like, I wonder why I don't feel like doing cardio. I said, that's because mm -hmm. I did damn cardio. <laughs> you know, airport. airport. <laughs> Walking around with all these bags and having to. Exactly. Work. You're already doing the cardio. You know yeah. what I say before, before I let you get out of here? Um, you, you mentioned that. You know, you're you're obviously, you know, you're in great shape. Do you do um, something? You know, do you ever think about adding to your list of things that you do, uh, like a workout thing going on, like maybe a workout video, or, or do you do that already? Already, um, because I'm I I got certified two years ago. Nobody knew oh. it, but uh, I also want to now start taking classes for nutrition because even though I know it, I want to have the paper. So mm -hmm. they can, you know, do my one-on-one -on -one sessions with people because I've already done sessions with people without charging them. It was kind of my way of seeing what I could do. Yeah. And so many people are like, thank you so much. You know, I lost weight because it starts with the eating first. I wouldn't even start a workout regimen if you can't change your diet. You got to change your diet, right? Then what are you doing? You're not going mm -hmm. to accomplish your goals if you work out five days a week and then eat like crap as soon as you come back home, it's not going to work. So your yeah. fitness has to start here first. Yeah. So start with the food and get a routine with that. Then you get into the working out. That's why I want to do a one on one type of thing with people. How do you not how do you not eat bad uh, being on the go so much like you are? You know what I yeah. mean? Like, so so I need to know that one. This is impossible. <laughs> Yeah, I carry tuna pouches. I carry mm -hmm. um, like these little wheat crackers and all my teas. And uh, like when I got here, Instacart is a is a great resource because mm -hmm. most places have Instacart. So when I got here, I ordered an, an aloe leaf. Um, I ordered some rice, some brown rice. Like I ordered some of my essentials that I use and I bring my spices with me. So I have my mm -hmm. turmeric and my curry powder. Like I have a whole... I have everything. Okay. So I bring that stuff with me. That's why my bag is so heavy. So that I, I can eat um, good, but mm. I don't, I'm not hard on myself when I have a, a cheap meal because I don't do cheap days. Cheap right. Leads into you just eating bad and eating bad. Leads, yeah, days leads into cheap months. <laughs> I leave you guys. I'm gonna go downstairs and probably order pasta, which I don't really eat anymore. But mm. it'll be my guilty pleasure because I've been working so hard and um, I haven't eaten that much, and I I lost a lot of weight because I was drinking my meals. I was drinking, you know, all my proteins and everything okay. that I wasn't yeah. eating. I wasn't physically chewing any food. I was just drinking all smoothies and I went down to 123 pounds and I realized that wasn't healthy for me. So right. I've been doing a little bit more of, you know, cheat meals here and there. Uh, I carry oil exactly. with me and I carry honey with me. So when yeah. I'm not putting honey on my body, don't even ask. Um, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> keep it clean. Keep it clean. <laughs> I'm using it in my oatmeal. Ralph, it's good for you. <laughs> Again, okay. I'm not. I'm not doubting that, but I'm just gonna. He's like, I'm, 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 I'm gonna tell you. I'll tell you this. When I when I come, morning, when I go down to your neck, your neck in the woods, right? Mm. I generally do try to eat pretty good, but there is a place down there in your area that I just I, I got to one day and I just love it. Royal Farms chicken. It is the devil. Oh my! It is the devil. It's the devil. It's it's really like crack. Like people really talk about. <laughs> Farms chicken. That chicken, wow. I did. I had a piece before, and I said I can't ever eat this again mm -hmm. because I'm gonna keep eating it and keep eating it, and it's it's not good for you. But yeah, you that's that's all bad. But it right. tastes good. It tastes so. It, 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 and, and luckily, it's the only place where I can get at. It, but it's like when I come into Baltimore, usually the hotel I stay at is not in Baltimore. It's in Lithicum Heights. Yeah. Right. That's right. Down, yeah. You know, right down the street from the hotel. But when you call across the highway is the world farms world farms so it'll be like two o'clock in the morning i'll be like yo what man I, I, need, I need i need some chicken fingers run down there real quick get some chicken fingers with a biscuit some barbecue sauce come on back for live i go to maritime institute a lot in lithicum heights so mm -hmm. i know the area uh pretty well yeah so it's what are you talking about yes. yeah it is yeah. the devil 
It is the devil. I mean, it's the perfect hotel because down the street is the Royal Farms. Right across the park, right across the the driveway, the parking lot is it is what's that? Was it Rocket Movie Theaters? So I could just go see a movie, go get some Royal Farms, and like it's like five minutes. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah, that's too. That's too much. <laughs> you know what? I, but I, I I definitely suggest the fact that you are a mother. You've had you know your mother of ten. You would probably clean up if you yeah. did like a thing for pregnant women after they, you know, after they give birth and get back into good shape or whatever, you know, get back into shape or even get into better shape than they were before they got pregnant. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I, I, I definitely would I'm love I'm in the best shape of my life. I've never been, um, like, I've never developed this much muscle tone. One of the problems that I've encountered is of course when you lose a lot of weight you have to deal with loose skin and so people yeah. think that you just magically lose all of this weight and you're fine and somebody has said to me before you got lipo and i said first of all <laughs> got in lipo i would need to fire the person that i use because i got all this skin and you mean mm -hmm. it's i got lipo you can't tighten my shit up for me real quick no <laughs> i had everything old-fashioned you know, so I don't have like a six pack of abs, but I am working on that. But mm -hmm. still, you have to deal with stuff like loose skin. But that's yeah. the, where the honey and the coffee grinds come in because I use coffee Got you. and I use honey. And I noticed the elasticity has gotten uh, much better in my skin. So there are mm. things you can do that can help. It's not a miracle worker cure, mm -hmm. but it does help. Maybe well, we can get you. Maybe we can get you back on to give some help. Help tips. We do here. We what we do here is we like to educate here at Real Talk as well, especially like with actors who's you know trying to keep their selves in shape, especially during the pandemic. People yeah. getting that. Every, that everybody pandemic. put in a pandemic week. Everybody, everybody put on like 10, 10 pounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Me it'd be my... good to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're losing weight. Everybody else is. Uh, putting on 10 pounds or more, but uh, that's cool. But uh, as promised, we're not going to hold you. I know you got things to do, uh, but definitely shout shout out anything else you want to talk about and shout out how we can, people can get a hold of you, especially if they want to get those health tips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially on my, my Facebook, but basically I always tell people, if you Google Monique Dupree, you'll see all mm -hmm. of my stuff, but all my stuff and my Twitter are both the original Gata, T-H-A, original Gata. And mm -hmm. just go to Facebook and put in Monique Dupree. You'll find me. I have two pages, unfortunately. But the page with myself and Tommy Dreamer is my active page. And then I have uh -huh. a fan page as well, the true original Gata. It's verified, so you'll know that it's me. Yeah. All of my stuff is verified, with the exception of my, um, my TikTok. And... Mm -hmm. Which, because I just kind of play on those things, but yeah, yeah. Uh, those are Mrs. Tommy Dreamer. That's my handles for those things because the original Gata was taken. I don't know who what? somebody took it. Uh, that's why you're the original. Somebody that took the. <laughs> yeah, I, that reminds me. I do want to talk to you one of these days about how you got that blue check mark because I'm dying to know how to how to get that thing. I don't know. I know they they they. I know a long time ago I got an email saying it was like twenty five hundred dollars to get that blue check mark. I was like, I'm not paying you guys. I don't know who the fuck you are. Uh, you don't have to I pay for it. Yeah. Hey, but I don't know of like I, some of those places uh, are probably scams. But yeah, most of them are. Yeah. What platform are you talking about getting verified? Twitter, Twitter, e either or Twitter or Instagram. I would like to get somehow get verified. But I would, I you can apply once a month on Instagram. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh really? Yeah, I can tell yeah, the criteria, you yeah. like what kind of impressions and how it should be before you go and apply. You should wait mm -hmm. until like you're doing something uh bigger or you have a project that you know that you'll get a lot of engagement. Impressions and engagement, yeah. You go and apply. Twitter, mm -hmm. I don't even know how I got verified on Twitter. I just kept campaigning for it. And one day mm -hmm. I was verified because there wasn't a way for me to to try to request at that time. Uh, so as far as Twitter, and then the uh, same thing with Facebook, I didn't even know that they did that until one day I went to my Facebook and it was verified. And I was like, mm -hmm. how does your Facebook get verified? But yeah. Instagram, I applied the 
uh, on Instagram and I applied four months in a row. And the fourth mm -hmm. month, I waited until I was doing a bigger project and then uh, was wrestling. It was something big with wrestling. And then uh, I got approved. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a criteria that they, they all have their criteria laid out. I think you don't get to know it until you apply for it or whatever. Then they let you know what the criteria is. But I that's cool. About that, uh, Ralph, for sure, because I was just as shocked as anybody else with um, getting verified, especially on mm -hmm. Twitter, because I was like, okay. And meanwhile, I don't really grow a lot of followers on Twitter, mm -hmm. but I'm okay. Mm -hmm. with Instagram is really my place that I like to be at. And my Facebook has the most amount of followers. I have 66,000, you know, followers on that page. And I was like, I don't know why, but <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's always right. Certainly where, where you're most active at. I think that probably has a lot to do with it too. So. But I wasn't as active on there. And usually what I post on Instagram goes to my fan page on, yeah, on, on Facebook. Facebook. But yeah, I, they're connected now. You could post and you could post on both platforms now at at once. They have like because you have the business page on Facebook or whatever or the fan page. You should be able to post simultaneously now. To both yeah, platforms. that's that's my biggest following there. I yeah. when I looked at it last week and said, "Wait, I have sixty six thousand followers. Who are these people following me?" Like, I really <laughs> wanted to know. Bad. <laughs> Where are you guys at on Twitter? Like, come over there. <laughs> Here, here's, a, here's a fan right here who said he wants uh, Joseph Tanner wants to thank you for coming on Real Talk tonight. <laughs> I appreciate it. <Yeah. laughs> no, that, that place y'all talk about, that chicken place, I never heard of it before. Well, what somebody had commented while y'all were talking about it. They said, I don't know if he meant what he said, gas station chicken. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's it, what it is. is. It okay. is. Gas station chicken. Yeah, that's a big up to my yeah. man, too. <laughs> That's exactly uh, what it, and that's, that's what it was. I, I had, oh, so he, yeah, I had, he, he's a traveler. He drives around. He travels a lot, and you know he's in the business and all that stuff. So I, I don't shout out to my boy Deuce. He was like a damn gas station chicken. Yeah, I'm telling you this, right? Like as many places as I go to, I don't ever eat any type of food food from like um, 7-Eleven or yeah. other places. But I, I literally was in, was in this place one day down in Baltimore. And I walked in and and, it's, and I'm not even kidding. As soon as you open the door, this wave of chicken smell just hits you. You're like, what the hell? And they got like, and they're they're in there making chicken like, it's, it's, the like it's the devil. It's the devil. It's the devil. It's the devil because that's where we stop at for our gas station stops. And wow. my friend, I'm like, I don't even want to go in. I'm trying to hold my pee because if I go in there, I'm gonna I'm get a two piece. <laughs> <laughs> so how about I'm just Pull my pee or take me to Wawa because I don't have a chicken smell when yeah, I yeah 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 I'm good yeah he said it got him too <laughs> yeah. got and, him. This, and this is the, and this is the thing with Royal Farms and I did find this out it doesn't matter what Royal Farms you go to they all make this chicken all yeah. of them yes so 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 even yeah. even if even if you went to even if you went to Royal Farms like in the hood that chicken is it's it's, it's like yo just taste us it's like just taste us taste us it's, it's the devil. So good, it is. It's so good. Like yeah. I ate them because of that. Yeah. I, one time I was in there and I was like, "I hate you," and the woman was like, "You talk about the chicken, aren't you?" Because she yeah. knows frequent in there. I go uh -huh. get my coffee and I just have to fight it. That's listen. I'm an OG for fighting that chicken smell because mm -hmm. I have to. I have to fight that chicken smell all the damn time. I live in Baltimore. I want it so bad. I haven't had it in like three months. But the last time I had uh like a chicken breast, a chicken sandwich. I I just went chicken, chicken, chicken because I was like, yep, I'm gonna I'm gonna get this out the way real quick, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna hop up off of this because I don't want to like. Yep. Die. But it is. You have got to taste it one day. Yeah. The oh, only Lord. thing I don't like about it is when you when you get the meal, they give you those real thick fries. I don't like those real thick fries. Like so, I try to get, I try to change it. The Royal Farms chicken, I would be good to go personally. Exactly. If I just got the chicken, I'm happy. But I don't need the fries. I'll take the chicken and the biscuit. I'm I'm good. I don't need the fries. Now I'm, they have, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to check this place out at one day. You know. Chicken, but I'm not eating it. I'm not gonna get chicken tonight. I'm I don't eat meat from gas stations. That's what it. it I took never, me, and I never do. I never years, do. It took me three years to get any food from Wawa. You know, so you got you got Wawa. Wawa. I love Wawa. <laughs> yeah. 
healthy stuff from Wawa. So I'll get a yeah. egg wrap or egg yeah, yeah, egg yeah. They got the egg white wraps and stuff like that. So it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, it took me forever to get food from Wawa because I was like. I don't. I don't eat from gas stations. I was just no, but, I feel you. like I'm not. I'm. I'm sorry. I be. I be in Seven Eleven. I see people then get getting those um those hot dogs and pizza yeah. and wings. Like nope. Eat Seven Eleven stuff Ooh. now. Sheets. Sheets is the joint. Yes. Yeah. Sheets yeah. The joint. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I've never heard of these places. Oh That's a gas station as well. It's a gas station too. Uh -huh. But they. But they. But they. Fre they freshly make it and and to keep you in there. What they do is that some of the sheets have like 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 little um tables oh, inside sheet. of yeah, like, sheets. Sh like bed sheets. Yep. Oh, it's like their motto. Yeah, sheets. You eat our food, and, yeah, you yeah. eat us and you get us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they but sheets was the first place that I ever tried yeah. um <laughs> um Voss water. They they were the first ones to get Voss water. Yeah. Oh, okay. you know? And I was like, what is because it's just it's just like a big glass tube of water. And like yeah. And I thought it was plastic, but it's actually that's see that's where they trick you. Yeah. The, the the glass is sparkling water. The plastic is regular water. That's but they look both the same. You actually got to touch it to know which is which. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. I I, I never seen that. Uh, was, uh, yeah. You she's, gotta get out of Florida, man. Yeah. You gotta get out of Florida. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, trust yeah. me, I'm getting out of Florida ASAP. Um. All right, yo. Shout out your stuff, man. Oh, you, yo, you did. You you said it. Just, I did. Just, my my social. Just, media, just like I said, if you Google Monique Dupree, you'll find all my stuff. My Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. Learn more about me. My IMDb, which things are constantly being added, and I still have more uh, House of Hardcore shows that has mm -hmm. to be added to um, my IMDb as well. But that's like I'm taking my time with all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But in any event, to catch to keep up just follow my facebook or twitter or instagram because i post all the time no awesome uh, i kept i kept you longer than i promised i, I apologize okay. uh, we, we appreciate you hanging out with us uh please come back and hang out with us man because you you're you're a great guest wait, we, we, wait a minute like, before you go before you go i know he I know. always does this no, i know i know you got house of hardcore Right, you got House of Hardcore, but I'm quite sure you still keep up with WWE. And this is a wrestling question. There's actually two questions. Next week is the Royal Rumble. Who you want to win men's side, and who who would you hope? I'm sorry, who would you hope to win men's? Who would you hope to to win women's? Okay, I have no idea. Let me just. <laughs> Royal Rumble is my favorite pay per view for WWE. Like. Yeah, yeah. And I remember when it first came when they first came up with it. I thought it was so awesome the idea. I was like, "Oh, this is great." I'm more. I'm all always more intrigued and interested. Uh, sadly enough, with who's gonna pop up, than yeah else. So I don't say yeah. that person wins or that person wins because sometimes you have surprises and you just never know what's going to happen. I just know that I will be watching it because yeah. I don't watch WWE that much anymore. I don't watch Raw yeah. that much anymore, but I always, no matter what I'm doing, I come back for Royal Rumble because that is my all-time favorite paper. -paper. Yeah. I, I think that's one of the best ideas that they ever came up with. Yeah. It's a battle royal with a better twist. You know? Yeah. I've only been, I, I wasn't, I've never been to the Royal Rumble, but the first when they when the WWE had their restaurant in New York City was when Royal Rumble it was Royal Rumble 2000 I think I forget which year but I did go to that one and I'll never forget the reaction because it was the first pay per view ever that they the restaurant had but what it was that because the restaurant was on 44th Street 43rd and 8th and the Royal Rumble was at Madison Square so when the wrestlers were finished everybody came over to the restaurant. Yeah. And I'll never forget the reaction when Taz came out and his music because it was the first time he was in the WWE at that time. It was his yeah. first match. He came he came to the Royal Rumble. Everybody was like, oh my God. And then literally half hour later, he's walking into the restaurant. And when he walked in, they played the steam music as he was walking in. People think that that he was coming back to the show. And everybody said, No, he's he's walking in the front door. They're like, What? <laughs> <laughs> See Taz walking up and in his suit, all like, Yeah, I was just there. Like, so, so all the wrestlers. Over the course of the night, instead of like going back, because they I mean, they had Raw the next day. I don't even know what Raw was. They all had to come to the restaurant to at least make an appearance, at least like five, ten minutes, and then bounce out. That was the coolest. Th 
Vince, yeah. Vince, I think I, I think I can call you Vince. You, if anybody, you need to bring the WWE restaurant back. Mm. It, that, that, that's something that we could all use again. And Vince, this time when you do it, don't mess with the food. The food is what killed the restaurant. The food was good, then you changed it, and then it went straight downhill. That's what killed <laughs> I don't it. Know. I never heard of the restaurant. But it seemed like, I, as you can see, I'm well, built w, for the well, w, w, I don't WWF know New York? <laughs> Yo. I knew the restaurant. I had just never gone to it. Oh, okay. I, I, yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, I, the, the first, when, when they opened it, the very first event they had it was an autograph signing with, with four four of the rest four of the divas. It, it was it was um the cat, uh uh uh, uh Tori. No, 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 I'm sorry, the cat, um the girl BB, um mm -hmm. Jackie, and one other wrestler. Me and my ex at the time, Shantae, we were the second and third people in line to meet them. The first guy came out there and he didn't know what to do. I came out there and I started getting hugs from everybody. And then she came there and started getting her and then they said, nobody else gets any more hugs. They just got to take your picture and go. Wow. But it, it, but many times I was in there and wrestling would just pop. Like I was in there one night and Victoria just came pop, popping up in. And it wasn't an event when she just popped up in there. Oh, you know? she would pop up everywhere. She yeah. I, got, I got a belt because I met Stone Cold. I'll tell y'all that story later on. That's a long story. But I, I actually have a title belt because I met Stone Cold in the restaurant. Right? Oh. And it turned into this whole big match. But many times I was in there, and even during the pay per views, even the pay per view was somewhere else. If if if, the, if that particular wrestler wasn't on that on that card for the night, somehow they'd show up in the restaurant and they'd just be hanging out with everybody. I mean, yes, it had its VIP area, yeah. but they were like, "I'm not staying. There. I'm coming out with the fans. I'm gonna I'm go to the bar. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that." Well, it I was the. That's how a lot of guys are. That's what I love about them so much, you know. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you, 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 you've been behind the scenes in that world, so well, both of y'all have. But you know, <laughs> you know, it's just uh, that's 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 that's, that's crazy, Ralph. That's your buddy, but I'm gonna let her go because you make me let her go. Right she now. Call, you gonna call, call me like later on and start cursing me out there? <laughs> so I gotta get my sleep. I gotta put I gotta put my honey on me. So. <laughs> <laughs> put some honey on you. You want to take a honey? Put some honey on your skin. Honey roll a roll a roll a blunt. Roll some papers and with my, and my stomach and my legs. All See? over my body. See, right. See, I'm yeah, trying. You think I'm of, trying to you keep. Think of I'm trying to keep. Okay, wait, wait, I'll go when it. You think of Monique. Roll some roll roll some papers with and put put her in your mouth <laughs> and put some honey on your body. I'm with trying that, to keep I'll it clean. Have a good one. Thank you. Be All safe right. out there. All right. Say, I'll call right. you later. All right. Later. <laughs> See, I'm trying to keep it clean. I'm trying to keep yeah. it clean. <laughs> that was great, man. She's great. She is a great um guest, man. She's cool. Yeah, she Very is. Cool. She, she is. Very cool. And I, I have I have always said this from the first. Actually, when I when I came back in the country, this is how I met Monique. And this is this is a true story. Mm. When I came back in the country, right? I came back in January 2008. And yeah. there was this new thing called Twitter. So I was, you know, seeing what it was. Because at the time, I was using MySpace. I never heard of Twitter. Yeah. So I, I joined Twitter. And then I, then I started seeing these tweets from her. I didn't know who she mm -hmm. was. So I was seeing these tweets from her about, um, you know, burlesque shows and wrestling and all mm -hmm. stuff. And she, and she posted that she was doing this burlesque show in New York. And said, well, can I, come co can I come to the show? She was like, sure. Mm -hmm. right? It was at this spot on Avenue, on Second you know, Avenue. C in New York City, it mm -hmm. was this whole goth bar that I was at. Just, right? throw that there. Just speaking of the body, <laughs> once again, people, ten kids natural, ten, ten. kids natural, right? And there. all by the same. All so in case someone wants to be yeah. funny, all by the same guy. Too. Yeah, yeah. Well, ten. she's a true mother. She's an Earth. She's true an Earth. mother. <laughs> you know what I mean? You yeah, know, yeah. That's good. Mother Nature but, but, right but, there, but and she's black. Even, Right, and she's in great. Like I said, she's in like wonderful shape, and you know, for her to, like I said, she she definitely. I'm I, I'm not surprised that she does, uh, you know, training and stuff like that because she should. You know, she's mm -hmm. women right now who you know who uh, have you you have the baby and you know you you get a little bit like, hey, you want to get that weight off? And y'all need to hit her up. Y'all need to hit her up ASAP. She exactly. she she get you right. She'll get you right. Yeah, you know. Yeah, really. 
But like I was saying, like I didn't know who she was. She didn't know who I was, but she said I can come to the spot, and I went to the spot, and she did this whole burlesque performance. And then when it was over, I got to meet her, and I told her who I was. Like, yeah. oh, hey, how you doing? And we've been friends ever since. And we would bu- we would bump into each other like at comic co- uh, comic conventions, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, yeah, or other things. And we just another thing friends. that she does. She's a big cosplayer. Yes, that's another thing that she does. She goes to Comic Con. She cosplays. She's she's truly a Renaissance woman, you know, and I love that about her. She's a grinder, yo. She's a grinder, you know. That's I always admire that uh, people, you know. She she grinds, gets it out, she gets it in. So that's 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 what's up. It was good good to have her here. Good, thanks for uh, reaching out to her and having her on. So let's get to the um, yeah. So so we talked about it a little bit with her on, and she said. You know, she agreed the consensus, of course, Jamie Lee. But I have some other people in mind that's that's appeared in several films. We know Nev Campbell's got to be in it, right, for the um, Expend the Bells horror edition. Yeah, um, you know, she's obviously been in the screen movies. Uh, she was, uh, was, she, was she in any other horror films? No, she's, she in, the, she's in the craft. She was in the craft. Yeah, in the craft. Right, exactly. So there you go. Uh, oh yeah, her character was pretty <laughs> crazy too in the craft. Um, what about Sarah Michelle Gellar? All right, I I have here a list. Of, I wrote down the characters in the Expendables and who I thought could play them from our from our horror list, you know, or our mm-hmm. thing. And then something else that I I thought about when, we, when I was making going through this, you know, not only about who would you face, but if they really didn't make it, who would direct it? That's the mm. that was a tough question. Like, like who did you pick to direct it? I would, I, I would I would go with James Wan because he can have a he has a nice balance of action and horror. You know what I mean? <laughs> he could do both. Yeah, pretty true. well. I'm going he's proven, he's proven yeah. that he's he can do both. He did, you know, the, the films like the Conjurings or whatever those other films that he did. And then, you know, he did Aquaman, which was very action packed, you know. That's true, but I'm I'm going with a different direction. If we're going to have a female version, then mm-hmm. it needs to be a female. So my yeah, choice to direct are the sisters, Jen and Sylvia Soska. I'm okay. taking the two of them over almost anybody. They they mm-hmm. just got a knack for this thing. Not only did they do See No Evil 2, um, mm-hmm. they also did the remake of Rabbit, uh, they were calling them mm-hmm. Rabbit. Um mm-hmm. But the movie that really caught everybody's attention, they did this movie called Dead Hooker in the Trunk. Mm. It's, it's the, one of the craziest movies you'll ever see, but it is so fun. Crazy name, Dead Hooker in the Trunk. Dead that's Hooker in the Trunk. That, you know, actually that was that was one of them. That's one of those names that when you walked into like Blockbuster and you're just looking for something to watch, that's gonna catch your eye. I'm like, definitely what? pulling that off the shelf. You're I'm like, pulling what? that off the shelf. I'm like, oh wait a minute, Dead Hooker in the Trunk. I need to. I need to now, see this. Now, I, I don't know I, what it's about, but I need to see it. I, yo, I met the two of them at the last Comic Con I went to. They were doing it. No, the next last one I went to because they were doing the screening of Ceno Evil Two, and beyond the talent, they're extremely, extremely beautiful. Both, I think they're both Russian, no Polish or something. They are gorgeous, okay. right? Mm-hmm. And but they're extremely talented and extremely humble. But they're also huge horror fans of the horror genre. Mm-hmm. I think they even were doing something for Fangoria. They, they, that this is their world. This mm-hmm. is what they want to do. And they're twin sisters. They're twins. So okay. you look at them, you're like, I don't know which is which. I mean, it's, you can if you get to know them, I guess you could probably tell. But yeah. I mean, and the thing is that one of the sisters came to the AVN, and I didn't even know it was even her. She was walking the red carpet with uh, with Tommy Pistol because I think he he's a fan of their work. And I didn't even know it was her until like two months down the line. I was like, wait a minute, I saw you with the. At, 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 even in. But um mm-hmm. I'm like if it's gonna if it's gonna be a female led movie, then it should be done by fe- for this, mm-hmm. only for this, it, it having a female influence and two people that are definitely into the horror genre. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought That's about Eli Roth. I thought about Eli Roth. I thought mm-hmm. maybe yeah. I, my 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 pick would have been James Wan. Uh what about uh as part of the cast, you know, you have the the far the Farmiga uh <laughs> Sisters, they both are in horror no, films. She, she, she did. No, she did not make all this. See, I, I wrote Wait down. A minute. Now she's in The Conjuring, and also remember, she plays Norma Bates from the Bates Motel I, show. 
I you thought about <laughs> I thought about that. I thought about that, but I I, I went and I looked at this list, right? Uh-huh. And I looked at the people that played the, the actual roles in the Expendables. I said, okay. Uh-huh. So mm-hmm. this this is my list. The role that Stallone played, right? Because he was leader. That's that's Jamie Lee Curtis. I, mean, mm-hmm. I couldn't think of anybody else. Yeah. For the the character that Statham played, I got Nev Campbell. Okay. Right. Now this is a little different for the character that Jet Lee played is mm-hmm. Sarah Michelle Geller. Mm-hmm. Right. The character mm-hmm. that Lundgren played, I know this is gonna sound crazy, but Danielle Harris. Danielle Harris, yeah. Okay. okay. I can go with that. Now, Daniel the- Harris, for the people who may or may not know, if you don't remember her from the Halloween movies, she played young little girl. She was the little girl. Her actual name was Jamie. She was the little girl that, uh, you know, Michael Myers was chasing in uh, The Return of Michael Myers, um, part four and part five. She grew up and she was in other horror films and she also appeared in the two Rob Zombie films. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, um, as an older um, character, so um, I think she played. Did she play Annie? Did she play Annie in the in the Rob Zombie versions? I think so. She she she, she, she was the sheriff's daughter, but she's yeah. also in Seen No Evil. But most, I think, what a lot of people remember her in, which I forgot she was in. She she was Bruce Willis's daughter in the Last Boy Scout. Mm-hmm. The yeah. one that was. I mean, the one that was just coming with all the wisecracks, but that's mm-hmm. Danielle Harris. So yeah, yeah, she yeah. had grown up in front of her eyes. She, once again, yeah, another sure. beautiful girl, but extremely yeah. talented. And, and, and just, talented. Uh, talented. she's just yeah. a horror OG as far as I can Oh, see. yeah, yeah, she is. And she's been in, uh, you know, numerous horror films as well. You know, um, she, she's been in, in numerous horror films. So I, I can see that. Yeah. Um, then I said for the character that, that Terry Crews played, this is going to sound like, and I thought about it. And I said, like, "Yeah, I'm taking Kate Beckinsale for that Kate role." Beckinsale. Okay. Yes, from the Underworld series. I'm now, putting her. couldn't Kate? Couldn't Kate make it in the in the action one as well? Yes, too? yes, she could. She, she could. She, she definitely could, could be in there because Underworld is, to me, Underworld's more action than horror. But you know, it falls, I guess, under there. Um, well, the the thing the thing with that is is that I was really looking at Kate Beckinsale and, and the move this the third her, the fourth movie that she's in <laughs> turned it more into an action movie than, than a horror movie. But the first underworld, first and the second one, I'm gonna get more of a haunt horror vibe going on with that one. Then they turned it into something that it shouldn't even got turned into. I think I mean you know I mean it, it, it's gonna fall it's it's got multiple genre uh, potential and it's gonna fall in horror somewhere because of the vampire background and stuff like that um, monster background so it's gonna fall under horror I just I just I I lean it more towards action you know you know who someone I don't know if she's on your list but she's on my list is uh, and actually she was on we had her on the show one time Felissa Rose. Felissa Rose. She 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 played for people who may not remember Felissa Rose. If it was a little film called Sleepaway Camp back in the day, where she was the star of it, and that was like your your uh, your uh, classic slasher film. You know, yeah. kids in the camp getting killed, and she played uh, the main girl who Angela Baker, who was the killer. And then you know they came on when. But now she never continued in the series of Sleepaway Camp, but she has been in numerous dozens of, she's become a scream queen. She's been in dozens of horror films, B movies, whatever, you know, horror films all over the place. So I definitely would go with her. She And, and, and to this day, you will see her at a comic con and that famous face that she makes is so, and she's so beautiful. She's a beautiful uh, you know, woman, but she makes that that face she makes is is horrifying. It's so scary. <laughs> but that's yeah. this Melissa Rose, you know, from Sleepaway Camp, and then and and I think I'm trying to find the uh, and look at the face. Yeah, <laughs> that's the face from Sleepaway Camp. That and, 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 yeah, I, didn't, and I didn't I didn't put her down there, but on that, yeah, she should. I mean, yeah, that's, this, that's this from is just camp there. and I and I think with, with with us coming up with at least with me coming up with this. They're all like a name person that that brings you into like oh I want to see it. But then do you do you have other people in the horror genre as a, as like cameos? Yeah. Yes, 
Is someone like that hurt? Yeah, like 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 I might even say something where they're at the bar and the girl serving drink is is uh the girl from the zombie Rob Zombie's wife, you know, mm-hmm. which yeah, now, right. you know, where, where she's just it's just a brief cameo. It's 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 what 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 did your guy call it? Oh, um, um, not fan reaction. No, like like a fan not into fan, fan service. Fan service. Yeah, yeah. That sounds kind of cool. Oh, fan service. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I like Look at that. that. <laughs> Here, yeah. Here's the side by side. This is this is from Sleepaway Camp, and then that you know from the movie when she was like a kid, and then there she is doing the same thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that it, I remember seeing that film when I was a kid, man, and I didn't know what I was in for when we went to see that film, and the ending of that film is so crazy. I want to get her back on. I'd love to get her back on the show because um, she she is also a very good uh, uh, you know interview, but um, she's well, definitely she's beloved in the in the horror genre. So mm. well, hopefully, once all this stuff is passed, we can start getting back to some, some comic cons, some chillers. Yeah. And we can get it yeah. going, you know. Because I, I would because I was just saying this today. I said I miss going to those kind of things now. I mean, yeah, I miss I miss here. comic cons, man. I miss comic cons because I mean, hell, I have my own uh, shameless plug. I got my own comic, Seven to Seven, <laughs> available, available on plug. Amazon, uh, Kindle. Um, yeah, shameless plug. But uh, yeah, since I have my own um, comic, I miss going to comic cons, man. I was just thinking about. It. Matter of fact. That's, you know, I like to do my, like, when I set up my little throwback Thursdays, throwback Tuesdays, whatever, that's going to be one of my throwbacks this week because, you know, we did MegaCon here in, uh, that's the biggest comic con in Central Florida. And um, when we did that, man, that was really cool, man. We, we got, met some really cool people. Cosplayers are like, they, it's funny because I know Maybe they're on. probably, Maybe they're going through, they're, yeah, they're going through withdrawal right now. Because th- young people was like, that's like their moments to be like celebrities. Like yep. people are stopping them left and right to take pictures with them. And trust me, they love it. They yep. love every minute of it. They love it. It's, it because it's your day to be a celebrity and people don't even know who you are. But you not got, you got to, right, no, nobody's going to judge you. No one's yep. going to critique you. They, they're just going to just love you. It was like, oh my God. How, no. And they'll ask you questions, yep. though. How'd you put your costume together? You know, what inspired, like, like, you're right. Yeah. You're a celebrity for just, that day. Just, you're, you're you're a celebrity, just a kick-ass celebrity. I'm still looking at Felissa Rose over here. <laughs> okay, get the hose. Yeah. She's get she's the, dangerously beautiful. <laughs> get the hose. Get the hose. Um, <laughs> He's like, get the hose. I know. Uh, so, so as I was saying, so further down the list, the the choice I got for the the character that 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 Randy Couture played, right. Since he since he's an MMA artist, I'm going to right. tell someone that that can fight. Chloe Grace Mortz, I'm putting her in that role. Okay. Right. So then yeah. you start looking at some of the other people. So the character that that Mickey Work played, where he was the guy that that you know put the mission together, mm-hmm. like he was a recruiter. That's yeah. Linda Blair. Linda Blair goes in that role. I'm about to say Linda Blair has to be in this film. Yeah, she she got to be in it. Even, like you said, she'll be good as a cameo. You know, coming into the film. Not really doing much, but one of the like she's gotta be a boss of something. She's some gotta sort. be a boss. Gotta be a gotta boss. Be a boss of some sort. Yeah, you gotta have Linda Hamilton. Uh, I mean I mean Linda Hamilton, um Linda Blair as a yeah. as a boss. Yeah. yeah. So then then you have the character that Bruce Willis played, this this Mr. Church, right? He was mm-hmm. the CIA agent. I said yeah. for that person, I'm taking Debbie Roshan. B hmm. B movie horror queen. I, I mean her, Probably there's only one other person, uh-huh. maybe L- Linnea Quigley, maybe the only other person yeah. I can think of. But I like Debbie Roshan. I'm glad. I, you know what, Joseph? I'm glad you mentioned that one. Because, you, I'm glad you mentioned the, Heather Lan- Lankin Camp. Right, yeah. because the char- the character that Bruce Will- that not Bruce Willis, that Schwarzenegger played that that the Mauser, that's Heather mm-hmm. Lankin Camp. I didn't forget about yeah. her at all. You mm-hmm. can't forget about her. Right? Can't forget about her. She she belongs in there because she, you know, like I said, you know, she. She she fought Freddie and lived to talk about it for a couple right. movies twice. <laughs> twice. Yeah, right. yeah. So then, so, then you well, go to somebody other, and then came back in New Nightmare. Right. So then you go to yeah. somebody other characters. So I said like the character that that um Eric Roberts played. He was like like the, the criminal. Um, that's Lena Quigley. 
I'm putting her. Okay. I think she's equipped. But then the person that was under her that was that was pain that was saved by Stone Cold Steve Austin, that's Asia mm -hmm. Argento. I'm, okay. I'm putting her in that role. Mm -hmm. And then you got then you have the character that that Antonio Banderas played, Gago. That's mm -hmm. Ashley Lawrence from the Hellraiser movies. Oh yeah, yeah. You gotta have her in there. Yeah, you love. Her. But you know what? Uh, the reason why uh, I, I think I don't know. I'm going back to Vera. I think she'd be a good villain. She'd be like I the. Like, I I could see her conspiring with all of the all of the killers or whatever. Because like I said, she played Norma Bates. You know, yeah. she's been in the Conjuring movies. She seemed like that type that could be like she, that, the anti person. You know what I mean? I agree. I agree. She she might. See, she, she had to get left off, and there's a couple of people that had to leave off because I was like, I don't know where else to put them, right? Because they only got two more roles. I got the now, I got the role that was his nice play, Doctor Doctor Death. I like his name, but that's Monique. I had to put her there, and I even get. Mm -hmm. I was trying to come up with a cool name for her because his name is Doctor Death. So, yeah, I thought since since he did with Death, I said we could call Monique either Miss Finn, mm -hmm. or but I like this one, Mistress Fatality. Mrs. Fatality. I kind of what, about like that. What, what about nurse fatality? <laughs> I thought about that one, but then I was like, but, the mistress, doctor, but nurse yeah, fatality. <laughs> but mistress fatality, because like Monique, a lot of times she wears leather, she likes wrestling. Mm. So that one, and then and then you could probably design the costume somewhat in like a cosplay outfit, you know, maybe maybe uh, like her version of Katana. See, same thing with Adrian Barbeau. She she yeah. just James had, had, she got, she got, said Adrian Barbeau. What about her? Right, she had to uh, get cut off because because the last the last role in it is the the character that Kelsey Grammer played, which was um Bonaparte, who was the guy that went out the third when he was finding new recruits. That's Sigourney mm -hmm. Weaver. I forget if anybody she she be the best person. Who else going Sigourney Weaver going to go to find people to go out there and go kick some ass? Sigourney mm -hmm. Weaver. And like you said, I yeah. did leave off Adrian Barbeau. I left off um. Uh, uh, what's her name? Um, oh, for the Resident Evil movies, I left her off. Oh, uh, you left her off. I uh, left, yeah. yeah. She I can go in the action one, though. She could certainly go in the action one. She definitely needs to go in the action one. So, the, let's, let's, I, I don't want to beat that dead horse, but before we end the show, let's confirm the action one again, man, because now we keep saying she can I go gotta in think, no, I need, I need, I need a week. I need, I need, I need, a, I need a week, week. week. I need a week for that one. <laughs> <laughs> because, because man, I, I I I need a week for that one. You gotta get me. Mila's gotta be in the action. Mila Jovich gotta be on there. But I I, I need I need because to I me once be. again, whereas Resident Evil it falls under horror, but I believe it 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 also falls under action, sci-fi, whatever you want to call it, horror action. I gotta go with her. Well, um, Joseph has said Sana Lake, but I think he means in Boucher Wright from Blade, because Sana Lake wasn't in Blade. Well, she was in Blade. She, she wasn't Blade. She played the mother. But the neat, all they did was that one movie, and really, mm -hmm. Nebushu Wright. Mm -hmm. No, and then Sana Lake Thon. I mean, if you want to say, well, she was also in Alien vs. Predator, okay. I might mm -hmm. get it. But, but no, it, it, right for right now, she's not in that quote unquote screen, at least to me. Quote unquote, that's Korean Korean category. No disrespect to her, but she she's really right. in the rom. If I would say like like what's the non Lathan's movie title of what mm -hmm. John Chipotle, she really falls into the to the rom com category, at least yeah. for me. Yeah, 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 you yeah. Know? kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, rom com, you know, type of films. Yeah, that's mostly, you know, she didn't done a lot of action or whatever. Um, yeah, uh, I, 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 so you you said you need another week. I think I think we I think we should just. Put you know even even if we do it next week top of the show and really just kind of put up who we think should be in those. I mean we already got our locks and I I, I I'm I'm I, as I'm thinking about it I think Mila has to be a lock bro. I, I think, think she so too. To be in it. I think she got she to be a lock. Like we we got our we got Barry we got um uh Joe Lee we got Theron those are the locks right then we got. You know, you, you know, you gotta put, you gotta put Mila. Um, you know, uh, if you're gonna put, like, you know, are, are we putting Scarlett Johansson in there? See, that uh, that's that that's a tough, that's a tough, it's a tough one. Yeah, it's a tough you know, one because dude, the only real action character she plays is from the the, car, the but, but that's true. But she but she's been playing it for a while now, and she yes. certainly and she yeah. hasn't been, and she's it's not like she's like the damsel. 
She's not a damsel. She's out there know. kicking ass with everybody she's else. Action, she's action hero. You know? Yeah, I, I put her in there, you know, and and, and, and then you got to put in Jennifer Lawrence then. Got to put in Jennifer Lawrence, you know, right. because hey, four four Hunger yeah. Games, you know, yeah. that's, that's and, and she played she played you know in in the comic book film too, and, 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 and then she played in the, that other film too, the um with the red what was it called the red something, where she oh, she wasn't yeah. doing a lot of action in it, but you know, it was an action based film. Yeah. It was, but yeah, I need I need a week for that because I I got I got certain people that I got to really take a closer look at like. <laughs> <laughs> and like yeah, like 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 even off this list, like I like certainly Kate Beckinsale should be on the action, but like do do you? Definitely. But then I I was hate the same argument for Chloe Grace Mortz. Do you put like come on Hicker? How are you not gonna have Hicker on there? Yeah, you know? I can see that. But what, has she done any other action films though? That's that's what I'm saying. I need I need to take a, a closer look. That's how see. we have to figure. Like when you, yeah, you gotta take because when you think about the 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 Expendables. You know, most of the people that are in these films are known for action films. That's why they're in it. You know what I'm saying? They've done more than I think. There's a. It's got to be a criteria. Like, like you've had to have done more than one action film, or maybe two, like two or more, maybe. Okay, you know two, or more. two or two more. Two or more. You know, uh, action film, and that and that could be in the same series. So then you would put Chloe in it because she's in the same series. She did two kick-ass films, you know, which and she was, you know, she was a kid at the time and still, you know, really getting it in with the action. Um, same deal with Linda, because you know, even with Linda Hamilton, you know, mm-hmm. she's done more than two, two or more, you know. Well, she, that's, she got determined, but she, but she was also in, in Black Moon, Black Moon Rising. If you guys never seen that, like yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah. that's an actual movie. Yeah, true. Yeah. So I mean, you know, she she she's been in a in a few, and um, but you know, she's that's her claim to fame. So that's where you know you're gonna see her. She's got to be in it. She now she can be like you said. She can be like maybe Schwarzenegger's character or somebody that doesn't do a lot, but you know, a lot of action. You gotta give her something though. I, if 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 I would do that, I would give her the character that Mickey Rourke played. You know, she yeah. she is she is the woman, either that character or the Barnapart character. Either you you you're the you're the recruiter of looking for new talent, or yeah. you're like the behind the scene person that puts the missions together. Yeah, you know, like I'm like, gonna be I, honest like, with like, you. Like I'm, the- I'm I'm getting Sigourney because she's such a great actress. She's she's my villain. I think Sigourney Weaver should be the villain. In the expend the bells. That I would think be she would, because you you never seen her play a villain, really. That would, would be, be something. Great. But the, the only time I've seen her play the villain, she played a villain in the Dare the 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 not the Daredevil series, but it was the um the Defenders. Mm-hmm. So the Defenders was a series of all of them: Daredevil, you know, Iron Fist, Power Man, Jessica Jones. The Defenders when they came together, she was the, like the main villain in that, and she was good. She was good. Like she could play sinister, you know. I I, I like it. Now here's here's another one. Yeah, uh, just something to think about, you know, as we get ready to end the show. But um, how do do we do we do we drag in? Um, well, she's more adventure than action. I must say, do we drag in? Um, uh, what's her name? Kathleen Turner. Do we drag her in? No. No, from the Rats and the Stones uh, no. films. Now, now, because and I'm gonna say why, because in, in Romance and Stone and Julia, now she's the backup. She she's the quote. Mm-hmm. Not, I don't want. Well, she's like the novice. Now, mm-hmm. Vi Warshawski, yeah, but is but beyond mm-hmm. those, beyond that, she's never really done another action movie. So, okay. And, 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 the, and the sad part, that's why I couldn't. Well, have Sharon Stone. Day. Same thing, Sharon Sharon Stone? Stone. Same thing with right. Sharon Stone. Same thing with Sharon Stone. Same. No, but she did some action. She did some action. Yeah, she yeah she Total did, Recall. She, she did Total Recall. Um, she did the, she she did Catwoman. That was a terrible movie, but it was action. She did action in it. Mm, yeah, but no, <laughs> not not not. But see, that's the thing. When someone yeah. else you can see is a little more qualified, like uh-huh. Sharon Stone, and 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 I hate to say it. But that would, if I'm gonna use that criteria, that would knock Gina Davis out. But how are you gonna knock Gina? Long kiss, good night. Yeah. I mean, that's- no, I, I think, I think, yeah, we, we got, we got to tweak the 
criteria a little bit, I believe. But I don't think that's the only action film Gina Davis has played in. I'm trying. I gotta look again. But even with that being said, uh, if it's a if it's an iconic character like that, you can't deny them. You know what I mean? They, uh, she played an iconic character. You know, um, I I thought that she played. Well, she a, was she was also she was also in in um, Cutthroat Island. She is in that movie. Okay. You know? Okay. But like I said, you know, I mean, she, she uh, she's another one. I mean, she's bouncing all over the place. You, know, you got the drama. You got what you got the Oscar. You in the fly. What you got your horror. You got your Tootsie with your comedy. And but then you got. I mean, comedy is where she's really at between that yeah. and on from that. But then you got Long Kiss Goodnight. Mm-hmm. And it is such, to me, I do think it is such an iconic role because yeah. I think that's really the first movie you saw where you really saw a woman really kicking some ass. Not just oh, yeah. a little bit. She, she and, was I, and I'm going to be honest with you. I, I was. I'm not gonna say I was skeptical, but I didn't know what to think when she was, ca- you know, her being that character. I didn't know what to think, and I was like, <laughs> hmm. either, you know. But when, but when, when the dude when the dude broke into her house and it started coming back, and she 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 um hit him in the back of the head, and she was like, bow. I was like, yeah, Damn. yeah, yeah, yeah. She she killed it. <laughs> she killed, and really? and that character. She, 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 like I said, it was, it's, it's an iconic character just by, you know, um, oh, and, and look at that. Uh, oh, it's, it, there's a TV and then, series. Yeah, and then, and then rappers she, went and took, and then, then you had the, the rapper Charlie Baltimore, and that now that yeah. name is brought, was brought into the hip hop world. So there's certain yeah. other elements to, to that movie a, that she didn't icon. have nothing to do with that, be, true. that made it. Icon because because yeah. nowadays when you when you hear the name Charlie Baltimore you're thinking of the rapper that was yeah, yeah. you're not thinking yeah. about her but you wouldn't have the name Charlie Baltimore without Gina Davis's character so that's like yeah you know, how, how, I mean, James James brought it up too Jimmy A said you know, we we did put her in there we we said Mila's a lock bro we yeah, said she's, she's a lock, a lock. don't go from Resident Evil to Fifth Element yeah she's a lock. Mila Jovovich is a is a lock. She's got to yeah. be in. Spend the bells. You know what I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> That's it, it, yeah. I mean, I didn't see. I saw a little bit of her in the Hellboy remake, mm-hmm. but I was like, man. I don't know. Just yeah. just just from from the Resident Evil films alone, mm-hmm. she belongs in this movie. Period. You know, she 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 is. Can't remember. Remember, she went pretty far in our tournament. Remember, we had the tournament. Mm-hmm. She went like the final she went four. Very far. Yeah, yes, she, she did. Final she made final four. four. She made the final yeah. four in our tournament of action uh, female characters. And I'm sorry, that character is a beast. So, I mean, just her being in it, all of the, you know, doing all of that. Yeah, she's got to be in it. She's got to be in it. She, she's, uh... <laughs> this guy said, let's hope there's no Donald Trump movie. <laughs> It's a Joseph. <laughs> yeah, it it was. It was called Pee Wee's Big Adventure. That's what it was called. <laughs> what yeah, we already called. had it. We already had yeah. it. <laughs> Where's my bike? Where's my bike? Where's my bike? Huh? Where's my bike? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't. Yeah. Like I, said, I have a really good bike. I have two such a big bike. I have the best bike in the world. Now, now, now would that be the that's what I'm talking about. You see how dumb he was? He had that super hot girl that just wanted to go to movies, and he was like, I'm a rebel. What? You ain't that much of a rebel? That girl was like, Daddy. I just want to go with you. And you're like, I'm a rebel. I'm a loner, Daddy. A rebel. A rebel. Okay, yeah, you be a yeah. rebel by yourself. You be a rebel just by yourself. I'm a loner, Daddy. I'm a rebel. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah, Daddy. Daddy was a little cutie, too. Mm-hmm. And Jimmy A said Sharon Stone. We we talked about Sharon Stone. Uh, you know, because of what he was saying, she, she may not make it. Uh, she has a couple of, you know, little she had a couple of run-ins with some action stuff. Um, like I said, I'm trying to think. That's the thing. She she's like, yes, she is in um above the law. She's in, in action, law. Jack. She's in action, in Jack. Action, but she's but not, she's doing not doing action. anything. Yeah. Exactly. So she's I mean, now, doing, now if you yeah. wish to say the Alan Quartermain movies that she those really horrible, real ripoff of Indiana Jones, a worse ripoff than what 
uh, 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 the ones with Nicolas Cage was at, if you really want to say it, then okay, but I, <clears throat> I can't, mm. I can't, I can't. And, and that's then, another I mean, thing. I, I think I think next week what we'll do is this: we'll cast our expend the bells, and then let's find it. It's 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 hard to find, and then we got some new people that's entered the game since this franchise. Who else can be in the the expendables? The next spend. I mean, I'm sorry. Now he can't be in it because he's he's passed away. I, I'm sorry. I should Sir Sean Connery should have been in yeah. one of the Expendables. I'm sorry, Sir yes, Sean, Sean should have been in there because you, you know he did Bond, but forget about Bond. Did you know Highland that he did? Uh, you know, um, the the, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. You know what I'm yeah, the Rock. Come on, son. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I mean, as far as a guy, I also would say. Um, I mean, yeah. I think everybody would say Steven Seagal, but and, and I think the only reason it, Seagal is because him, him, out, so, him yeah. and Stallone just could not. Yeah, they, they couldn't. They couldn't work yeah. out. Yeah, but, 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 but Seagal's a jerk, though. Seagal's yes, he a is. Real, He's a jerk. Real jerk. He is a real yeah. jerk. But He's definitely, jerk. Jackie Chan should go. Yeah, and, I'm and, and, Jackie Chan right? and show. And and, and, you know, and not not for nothing, but if you're going with someone brand new, brand new. Mm-hmm. I hate to put him in here, but you got Mark Wahlberg. I think Mark mm-hmm. Wahlberg should yeah. go into there. You can, you can get Mark yeah. in there. Yeah, Mark. Mark is. I think he's. Uh, he's. He's earned his way into one into that film. I, I don't, um, I don't, he's a leading I would, man. I don't you, know you, if I would put Vin Diesel in this. You have to put the Rock. You have to put I, the see, Rock. And that's the Wayne. other thing. That's the other thing. I don't know if I would put the Rock in there. I know, and the reason I'm saying that is only because. The Fast and Furious franchise is still going. If you look at all the guys that that, that he had in the Expendables, yeah, they but didn't I mean, have Statham's a character going. Statham's but, in but, it. But, but, that's right. But the Transporter series was done. He wasn't doing yeah. it. He had. That's what I'm saying. All those guys that he had in there, mm-hmm. even still known at the time, wasn't doing any more Rocky movies. Mm-hmm. But all those guys, the only one he had in there that was fairly like new was um Hemsworth. Yeah, Hemsworth, the young Hemsworth in there. Yeah. You know, right. um, so, do we, do we so bring I, now? Do we bring in his big brother? Does he get the, the oh, job? only, only if he's no longer doing Thor? Then the same thing for Chris Evans. If you're no longer doing that role yeah. anymore, it's yeah. passed on to somebody else. Then mm-hmm. yes, because because now you're not associated with that front. Now you can be part of this right. franchise. But right. so long, so long as you're still doing that yeah. character, like it, like Chris Evans supposedly is coming back from Captain America. I think it's going to yeah, be a, yeah. a glorified cameo. That's what yeah, I would yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much what but, it's gonna be. He's gonna be like right. So something like that. Yes. Yes, you could. Now that you could say something. Well, do, do you put Samuel L. Jackson into? Yeah. A, you, and I was about. To, that was my next question. Do we insert Samuel L. Jackson? Um, you know, into the. But, he, but, he, but he's, you know, he's, have, he's 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 constantly working. So. Right, but he but he would have to be the, the character that didn't do nothing. He's just like. Yeah. He's just in it. Keeps yeah. the story going. But no, like yeah. like you want to put him out there in the middle of Bolivia with a machine gun? No, no, you're not. No, you're not. Yeah. You know? yeah. But that, yeah, you would. You know? Okay. Um cer- certainly what about Nicholas- Carl Weathers. How come they never reached out to him? Good yeah. question. I think I think I, Carl I Weathers put I think Carl Weathers with uh that with Man Lauren has put himself back onto that list. Yeah. And really, I'm 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 shocked, but not surprised that there was never an action Jackson too. I, I really thought I really thought that you know because really no, it, did, it didn't do be. well in the theaters, but it did but a it lot became of business. A cult. It became a yeah. cult classic. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm surprised that that had never happened. But maybe it definitely time. became popular enough to do a second one. Mm-hmm. Uh, when even when if it was the, even if it was direct to video, certainly yeah. became popular enough to do a second one, and they never pulled that trigger. Isn't that funny that they, they don't they don't pull that trigger with with, with the, the guys in the black franchises? But if it was a white guy or a white character, they pulled it. They say, "Yeah, let's take a shot. We we'll do a director video." But mm-hmm. it's nope. weird, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. this is nope, what happened. Nope. No Last so, Dragon two, no nope. no Action Jackson two, nope. Timeock should be in it. <laughs> they need to get Timeock in the thing. Yes, 
he would just, be just, awesome just on gen- just on general respect you yeah. have to put you would so have to best, put- you gotta put him in so so what about um michael jai white he never made it into any of them right I would definitely say Michael John oh, White. John White too. No, he, he'd be nice to get in there. Yeah, damn. I do. do we have enough black uh, superstars to make a black version or a a a, a, a you know a a, a a a black version of Expendables? A person of color, uh, Expendables. Mm. <laughs> that would be interesting. Well, you well, you figure you figure Wesley. Wesley, who Michael was in John Expendables. White, Matter of fact, Weather. that's perfect. You could spin it off of his character that was in the Expendables, yeah, where <laughs> yeah, now he's got his own team. Yeah. Where yeah, the, Expend- you, you got- the Expend Bros. <laughs> yeah, the Expend I know that's so okay. but that's okay. Expend though. But yes, Wesley Snipes, Michael J. White, um, yeah, uh, Ty uh, Mock, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Michael B. Jordan, Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, there's should put him in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, now I would have to think about who else you Carl really Weathers. Carl Weathers. Carl man. Weathers. And I mean yeah. Sam Jackson and and just 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 to put this guy in there as a role that he's not gonna do too much, but just the fact that giving him the nod, yo, the hammer. He put yo, yeah. he's going in. He's going yeah. in. I don't care. You're you gonna have to make a role. You know, Fred the Hammer goes yeah. into if you're doing a yeah. black version of the he's he's yeah, yeah. A, he's he's the only head. guy, and I'm gonna be honest, yeah. he's the only guy that I would say is a, is beyond the word lock. Like if you don't put him in there to give his blood, him or Jim Brown, if you don't put one of yeah. those two guys in that movie to give like their blessing, forget mm-hmm. it. It ain't going to work. No, mm. no Eddie, you don't put Eddie Murphy into this. No, don't, Eddie you, does action. Eddie's action guy, but. Yes, he is, but he still does action with that comedic side. You can't, mm-hmm. this is not no comedic side. You know, okay. once again, you're going to be in Bolivia with a machine gun. Do I want to hear you going? Uh, what a, no. What about, uh, what about no Richard Tucker. Roundtree? What about Richard Roundtree? He, 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 to me, he would be on the same level as Hammer or yeah. James Jim Brown. He's on okay. that level, right? Okay, what about Ving Reams? He should probably be in there. He's done enough action. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. he would. He, yeah, Ving Ryan. So we, yeah. we we have enough people. We like, got we, enough people. We, to make we, one. we put we now. Wait a minute. Will we put Tyrese on that list? Hmm. I I wouldn't be opposed to it because he has done some action films. He hasn't done no. His action films are different type of action films. He hasn't really done no. You know, I'm gonna go. You know, save the well. I'm yeah, like save he, the girl. I'll tell you one thing. He will definitely try out for it. <laughs> he definitely yeah. get into it. Yeah. Uh, Joseph at MCM. <laughs> that's funny. No. Um, that's not the hammer we're talking about, Joseph. <laughs> no, not, um, not. Fred the uh, hammer. Yeah. Fred the hammer. Um, um yeah. who else can I legitimately think? Oh. Our boy, our boy Ryan, Rayon. We got to stick him up in there. Yo, <laughs> yo, and, and yo, man. Yo, did you, he was, did you watch he was the bomb uh, on Magnum P.I., man? Yeah, I don't did you watch never watch it, but he I watched it. Thing, man. Yo, yo, bro, he did his thing on in Magnum what, what, what about What about um, uh, Homeboy that plays Ghost? We got to put uh, him up. Maybe, uh, maybe. Yeah, he's did been we put him up in there. I've just seen. If, I gotta check his. Uh, no, but I know who I will put in there though. Instead of him, I put um my man. Um, oh my god, why am I forgetting his name right now? Um, oh, can't think of his name right now. But he he he. Uh, um, give me one second. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you his name. Uh, uh and I, 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 you got, I think I put Idris Elba in there somewhere. I think, yeah, I, think I said he, he just he just definitely yeah. should go from there. He's done enough uh action films. Yeah, come on. He's, like he said, he I'm black Superman. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go, right? Um what's my uh uh, uh Laz, Laz Alonzo. I'd probably put him instead. Now he's on the show The Boys. You know what I'm saying? He's he's he, he, he's been in other films too. 
Yeah, I mean, um, he is an avatar. I mean, Laz Lonzo is an avatar. So. Yeah, he's an avatar. He's on. He's on the boys, and there's a whole bunch of action in that show. Yeah, <laughs> Mother's Milk. That's the character he plays <laughs> on the boys. Um, he was in the movie Detroit. He's in the. He was in the Fast and the Furious as well. Hmm. Yeah, he played. He was in. I think it was the fourth one. He was the Spanish kid mm-hmm. that that was that was driving the green to green to yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, like you said, now going back, or oh, well, well, Ving Reams could. I mean, not Ving Reams. Um, actually, uh, my man from Fast and Furious, he is black. He's half. He's he's half black. He could make this one. Who? Vin Vin Diesel. Oh, Vin Vin Diesel. I don't. You know, I'm gonna be honest with you, and I, I hate to say this about somebody because you never want to see anybody like pigeon toed or just in the room. I think with him as Dominic Toretto. The part is just so massive that whenever you see him as something else, you're only thinking that this Dominic Toretto. I mean, yes, he did try it with Riddick. And he I did it with Triple part. X too, though. Triple X. That was but, an action, definitely an action. Yeah, but series. but tri- I didn't see Triple X return to Xander Cage. I'm still wondering why he did it because it kind of, from what I understand, it kind of sucked. Um, I love, but I, mean, I love him, still puts him in that. that oh, I mean, on, still, on, on resume, on his resume, yes, you certainly yeah. would say Vin Diesel. But then you got to start looking at Vin Diesel now. That the Fast and Furious, and, and also once again, the Fast. If you still doing the Fast and Furious franchise, and you don't need to be doing this. But even a man if you apart, did, remember a man apart, man apart. I, yes, I, I think he's earned. He's definitely earned. No, he's a, I mean, he's a, he's in Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, yeah he's earned you the know? strike. But I, I, I well, now you the, the be question. Better than but the question is, if you put him in a black version of the Expendables, mm-hmm. are you really going to see another guy or just another slight and slight version of, of Dominic? You know? Oh, well, I, I mean, wanna... it depends. I mean, just because he's played that character, but I mean, that's that's kind of like what the Expendables is all about. You know, like they, they show a lot of, you know, people that's played character, you know, and you saw Bruce Willis, did you see more than what you see of Bruce Willis, you know what I'm saying? And, that, but that, but that's exactly know? what I'm talking about. If you look at all those guys that's in Expendables, mm-hmm. they're not pl- like like you see Stallone, you're not seeing Rocky. You're not, I mean, you mm-hmm. might say, I can kind of sort of see Rambo. See Rambo. But, yeah, you can Rambo. see John Rambo. Yeah, but you're not seeing Rocky. But, but I'm sorry, but, when I see Jason Statham, all I think about is the transporter. Period. That's very true. That is very, very true. And, I, and oh, now I think, the, and so now I think the, if, if you did the Expendables now and you had Jason said, and now you wouldn't see Transport. You see the guy from Fast and the Furious franchise. You see that guy. Yeah. You know? And I think to a degree, that's what happens with The Rock. If you put The Rock into this thing, you're seeing Hobbs. You're not seeing whoever he's playing. You're seeing Hobbs. It's just another version of Hobbs. And I think even though, even though Rock's movies do great, they are good. I think that a lot of times when you see it, I'm seeing Hobbs. We're doing Expend the Bros. We got to put the rock in it. You can't not put the rock in it. If we're doing the Expend the Bros, and next week, we're about to end the show. Next week, I'm going to come back with my list, my my team for the Expend the Bros. But see, you know what? I'm going to be in there. He's a lot. But I'm going to be honest with you. If you're gonna put the rock in the Expender Bros, that's what we're playing. He's not playing the hero. He's got to be the villain. He's got to be the villain. That would be dope, Cause you, right? Because you ha- now you got to give them something that like you're not used to seeing Dwayne Johnson or the Rock. No, I'm gonna say Dwayne, not the Rock. Cause we seen Rock in wrestling as a bad guy, right, and right, to right. Agree, it, it didn't work. It really didn't work. But now, but now you're looking at Dwayne Johnson and all the movies he's been in. He's he's some kind of hero. Mm-hmm. Put him as the bad guy because he, he even in the Fast and Furious movie that he first did, when he was the cop, right? Mm-hmm. You saw him go from this guy who who was kind of he could have been bad to now him and Toretto teaming up in the end of the movie. You I know, need, I need to see. He's even go full tilt bad. He'd be, great, he'd be a great bad guy. You know who else would be a good bad guy? Because of course, most people. Won't consider him an action guy, but he really has. He's done enough action to get in to the Spend the Bros. And I'd love to see him because he's played a great bad guy, actually won an Oscar for it, would be Denzel Washington. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> we, 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 we've seen, 
We see him be the bad guy. guy. Like the Rock should be yeah. his second in command, and 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 Denzel should be the boss, like the mastermind behind. Yeah. Who, you know they're going after. Behind you know what I mean? He's the guy from all the muscle. Rock's the muscle, and, and and Denzel's the 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 brain. You know, uh, the mastermind. I, I agree. I, I I like that idea. I love that. Um, <laughs> Also, because if he if he comes in there and he's playing anything like he did in training day, I'm buying a ticket. I am buying a ticket. Anything. He. I'm, I'm not look. I'm not looking for him to play. Um. Said Frank ball, White. Dude, James said the ball dude. Are you talking about Bill Duke? Is that you talking about Jimmy Ace, the ball dude from the Predator? I mean, the Clock Stoppers should be on there. I'm not Bill, sure if he's talking no. about. No. 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 Talking would, about. No. Not Bill Duke. I wouldn't put Bill Duke into something like this. Um, now, now, was now, in Predator. Now, he was in. Uh, he was in uh, Commando. Yes. Now those are the first now, two that come to my mind as far as uh, action. Now, if you're going to say, well, if you want to take a black thread, would you pick Bill Duke to direct this? You might get my interest in that because he did a damn good job with Deep Cover. So yeah, 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 yeah. Bill Duke might be able to direct. Yeah, so we got to do this. We got to do this next week, Ralph. We got we got to do that yeah. along with the along with the uh, the expend the bells. We're gonna do the expend the bros. We're gonna do the the the, the black version, the per, per people of color version of the expendables. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's not, it's not my interest with that one. That one you really got my Bill Duke. <laughs> yeah, Bill Duke. Would be he'd be good to direct this. Also, of course, you 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 want to take you got the some of the real hot directors like uh, you know Ryan Coogler would do good with it. Um, you know uh, he he would definitely do good with it. Um, you know you know who I would like. You know who actually who I would like to see this if it was if we go a black Antoine. director. I like this. Antoine. No, the Hudlin brothers. Those guys. brothers. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Oh, the, the no, no, Hughes brothers. The Hughes brothers. Not Hughes the husband. Not, not, not regular. Yeah, the Hughes brothers. Because the they brothers. did a damn, damn good job with their presence. They sure damn did. They sure did. Mm-hmm. They sure did. They they did a damn good job with their presence. That's for sure. So there. So I'm gonna I'm going to look. I'm now, now I'm looking in now. You got me thinking about some stuff. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ponder Tyrese because I'm gonna look up. He's been in enough action films to be put in there, and he's not really anybody. Like you know, it's not like he's, he's known for this type of person. Unless you want to talk about the Fast and the Furious, you know what I'm saying? The character, in fact, but that, well, well, that's always a secondary character, though. So yeah, but yeah. but he's all, you got, you gotta when you look at Tyrese. He's also in Transformers. Yeah, he's in um, Transformers. He's a, I think he's in. Four, three of the French Transform movies, but you also have um, um, Black and White that he was in not the, what, a couple yeah, years ago. Yeah, the you one with the blue, the the one he just was in with the cop. That was the cop movie. Right, that's Black, Black and White. No, he was in Waist Waist Deep with, with Megan Good. He's in Death Race. Deep, yeah. You know, and that's when I'm saying he's going. I'm looking at this thing. He's also going to be in, in the in Morbius. Yeah, yeah, so, he's in Morbius so you, movie. I mean, so you can't just say nah. No, no, I, I mean, you got to consider him. Got to consider him. Yeah, you definitely got to consider him. But I, I, I want to think of some more cats that, that could definitely be uh, in this. What about, you know, you know, uh, someone who would be like a sleeper because they don't realize he, he does really good action because he is a martial arts guy would be uh, Don Cheadle. Don yeah. Cheadle is, is, is a martial arts guy. So he's he, he'd be a sleeper in this type of film. You know, but I can see him as like the uh, you know, the the tech guy on the team. You know, he he seems like he'd be good as like the tech, the the intelligence guy on the team. But you know, he get a scene where he can get some 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 uh some ass kicking going on. You know, I mean, with some fighting skills. Oh, most, most definitely, you know. And, could, and if he, if he was if he did not pass, uh, Chadwick Boseman. If he, Chadwick did not pass, have, like, if he didn't if he didn't pass. Chad would would have to be considered, you know. Um, I, I think uh, I think we got a nice one though. We got a nice uh, little thing we could put together here. And, and uh, but but we already said we're gonna reserve Denzel Washington and Dwayne Johnson as the, as bad, the villains, the, right? The, the villains. villains. 
Dwayne's the muscle, and the boss is Denzel. He would be an awesome villain, you know. Other than that, I would say if if it wasn't going to be if it wasn't going to be him, I would say Idris Elba, who also he can also play a good villain. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm going with Denzel because he is a, he he is an action guy. He's been in well enough action films to be that action guy. He would be perfect. He'd be perfect. A guy that sits behind the desk, the big boss that's on someone. Then he can have his little moment at the end where he can get a little fighting going on. But uh, through the whole movie, you got to get through the rock before you can even get to him. You know? Exactly. <laughs> so it's like, uh, that's, that's, no, that's. No, not, not for nothing. That, that, that's because I would have Denzel as the bad guy where I actually got to get, because, you know, we as, as, Black people, when we have these, we don't roll with one guard. We usually roll with two, right? Yeah, yeah. The other guy, I would probably that. That's where I would have homeboy from Power. Have okay. him in there, right? Like, like uh-huh. third in third in command is Omar Hardwick, then Rock, and then Denzel. So yeah. you got two really really tough dudes that you got to get to before you even before you even so, sniff so- my sniff my cologne. You got to go through these two guys. <laughs> you know? So I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, Stallone and Statham and Expender Bros is going to be, to me, Carl Weathers and Wesley Snipes. Yeah, that's Stallone and Statham, basically. Yeah, and then I think, that's I think bad. that uh, that Jet, the Jet Li character, that's Michael Jai White. That's Michael Jai White. Yes, that's Michael Jai White. That's- most definitely. L- London, oh, London I'm, really, was, I'm really excited about this. We got, L- we got London would be uh would be Michael B. Jordan. That's Michael yeah, B. Yeah. Jordan. London. Right. That'd be, that'd be like Michael B. Jordan or somebody around that lane. I'm really excited about this uh next week. That'll be that'll be good. Oh, Maddie, stopping by in the in midnight hour. Well, Maddie, where you been? <laughs> Maddie, where you been? You been Where'd absent. You been? What's up with that? Yeah, right. Yeah, we've been you've been absent lately. You know, it's all good though. We appreciate you coming by. You know, we about to, you know, end the show, but um No we James. Always, we always, we always, we that, always appreciate you. Do would we put Lawrence Fishburne into this? Hmm. That is an interesting one. He would he, definitely be one of those guys like a Bruce Willis character or whatever. He wouldn't be doing much, I don't think, at this point. But you know, Lawrence Fishburne, uh, he was in. Well, we always know he's more, you know, Morpheus. You know, so we know that. Lover? You know, I mean, he's hell, he's in the apocalypse now. I mean, he's in, he's in John Wick. He's in John Wick. You know? <laughs> but I think, but I think the same thing right now. What I just said a few minutes ago. If you're going to continue to play that character in the John Wick series. Mm-hmm. I, I think that it. I think that has to be the line that you draw. Where if you're already in a, a currently running series, then you can't be in this because you're already in this. If the series was ended, like if you were still doing the Matrix, that's fine because you're no longer doing it. But so long as you're still associated with, with a series that's currently running, I mm-hmm. think you would have to be knocked out of being in this. Because th- let's just sit and say this, they really did do this. So if that's that the case, be- then we got to knock out Michael B because he's involved with Creed, which is a series that's still running. That, that's very true. And, and yeah. now they're talking about they're going to bring him, which I'm like, why? You're going to bring him back for Black Panther too? Like, yeah, why would you dumb. do that? Why yeah, that's that? uh, I don't I, th- I that I mean that they reaching now for that one. I don't know if that's tra- they trying to do some fan service because of you know losing Chadwick. I mean he's not replacing. He's not gonna come back to be the Black Panther. But the bottom line is, what's the point of bringing? You know, the only thing that I the only thing that I saw that would make sense at all or halfway make sense is if they are true. Because we already know that Doctor Doom's gonna be in this. But they you know there's been been rumor after rumor that. The the Submariner Namor, you know, King of Atlantis is going to be in this, and he's going to be a villain in it. The only thing I could see that somewhat might make sense is if they honored his wishes and threw him into the ocean with his ancestors, like he said, and, and then and, and then he gets he gets uh he gets revived, you know, like you know, revived by uh and, you know as a villain. By the Atlanteans, you know what I'm saying, because they they control the 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 under under world, you know, under the sea, and they have advanced technology, you know, themselves. So it's possible that they could bring him 
you know, back that way because he gets thrown into the ocean as he asked to be thrown into the ocean or whatever. But other than that, I mean, I don't really see it even halfway making sense bringing him back. What's the point? But we'll see what they do. Well, like he's uh, a clone or something like that? Could be. And remember now, anything's possible with the multiverse. So you never know. Very true. Got, they're dealing with multiverse now. We're really going to get a big taste of that. We're, we're getting a taste of it with WandaVision. And I'll talk more about WandaVision next week. So we have I have three three uh, episodes under my belt. Not really feeling it as much. I can see where they're going with it. But this is not a show that they, they should have just binged this show. Like They should not do this week by week because people will jump off board. Because it's it's taking it's taking a while to get to the point. I, I have I did hear that I heard a friend of mine yeah, said that, that, it, that it wasn't really that uh, great. No, no, it, I mean, it's it's it, they're, they're they're tapping into nostalgia stuff because you know it's like it's almost like their life is playing out like a sitcom. You mm-hmm. know, what I'm saying like a classic sitcom, like uh, Bewitched or whatever, and like that. But you you obviously realize that they're. They're in something's going on. They're in like some sort of matrix, so to speak. You know what I mean? And you, you know, you're wondering where is all this coming from? And there are some very now. There's some very good moments in there where there's very weird, creepy moments where things like glitch and it's like, what, what's going on? Some Twilight Zone esque moments. If they keep throwing those little things in there, it would keep it a little more interesting. But you know what? I don't want to watch. You know, I'm not gonna say I don't want. Most people are gonna say they don't want to watch you know, a half an hour show where 25 minutes of it is, you know, sick, you know, uh, imitating classic sitcoms. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, it doesn't really make, I understand. I know that they have a, they have somewhere they're going with it. That's going to tie into the MCU, but I believe that they need to start. Um, they need to start picking that up because think about it. This is the first show. I don't think this should have been the first show either that we've been exposed to since the MCU movies. You know what I'm saying? It, it should have been the Falcon and it went to Soldier. Should have came out first because it's throwing you right back in the midst of the MCU. You know what I'm saying? Picking up mm-hmm. from what the, the events of Infinity Saga, right? So you're like, how is this picking up from Infinity Saga? Because, you know, spoiler alert, Vision is dead in the mm-hmm. Inf- Infinity Saga. You know what I'm saying? So now you have to wonder. But Vision was always artificial intelligence. So this is very, you know, this could definitely be very possible with him. And somehow Wanda is put into this, you know, this, they're, they're both kind of sucked into this matrix that we're, that's playing out as what well, the way it's playing out. And I just think they, they shouldn't be doing week by week. I'm not go trust me after week three, I'm probably just going to sit back and wait till it's over and then watch it. I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not running back there week after week. I'm not doing that. Just get to if they don't, if they don't completely blow me away. In, in 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 episode three, which I don't think they will, because I saw some reviews and the, the review people got to see three episodes instead of us getting to see two. And uh, I don't think they'll blow me away in episode three and they need to go ahead and, um, you know, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, so we'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that next week. So next week, this, this is our lineup. We are going to do the expense. We, we're going to we're going to finalize our expend the bells. We'll finalize our expend the bells list, and now we we've, we've taken on a new uh, list. We are going to do the expend the bros, the expend the bros, which is obviously uh, the all black cast of version of the Expendables. And you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. I could see Sly getting behind that and producing executive producing. That. I do too. I could see Sly executive producing. Too. Especially if you can get your boy Carl Weathers in there, you know Wesley Snipes. Sure, if he nah, if he, if he if he get Carl Weathers and he get Michael B. Jordan there, you got Creed, Creed and my kid. Creed, oh, Creed and son, yeah, <laughs> Creed and his son, the two Creeds. Yeah, I mean that would be awesome. So we do the expend the bros. There's a couple other people that may come to mind, but I'm sorry, uh, definitely Michael Michael J. White's got to be in it. And I'm sorry, I know most people may not pick him, but he's got to be in it. Uh, Timok has to be in this movie. Yeah, he has to out be out of respect, out of just respect, just for... out of pure respect. And he's the dragon now. He's yes, the black he dragon. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's the black dragon. You gotta put him in. 
you know so it's all good man so that was good we want to thank uh monique dupree for coming through and hanging out with us and um you know just kicking it with us she's got some rolling papers coming out <laughs> and so you can put it in your mouth you can roll her up lick her put her in your mouth <laughs> i'm going i'm going to keep you it feel- clean that's what i'm gonna say I know, I know good. her man. I don't. I don't want. I want to get. I don't want to get beat down. So I'm not. I'm going to keep it clean. <laughs> hey, man, I, like she said when she was on here, she said, "Where's the lie? I ain't lying." <laughs> Anybody can think how they want to think. I'm telling the truth. You can literally put Monique Dupree in your mouth <laughs> after these things come out. <laughs> so this is all good. Yeah, that's what no, I'm that's funny. Big up to her. She's also, you know, like I said, she was she's great, great sport too. Good sense of humor. She has some good some points that she made. She she's on the same page as us. Yo, let's do it. We starting it. Hashtag uh make Matilda. Make Matilda. Matilda the professional. We need to make that. I'm doing that. I'm gonna do that right now. <laughs> I'm doing that right. I'm doing that right this second on my Twitter. Wait a minute. No, I need I need a picture of Natalie Portman as until yeah. release the professional instead of release the crack. <laughs> release Matilda, man. Because actually you don't have to make it. He's already written this, the film. Hashtag release Matilda. Exactly. Get it done. <laughs> Get, it, Get done. it done. We need that, man. We need that in our lives right now, man. Natalie Portman about to get back on the map. She about to get back out on the big screen, you know, on, on the big time, on the big marquee, because she's going to be pretty much the star of Thor, Love and Thunder. You know what I'm saying? So she's she she's about to she about to do it, man. You got to get her out there. Got to get her out there. She We need Matilda the professional. I'm going to put a little hashtag. Where, where do they usually go to do those? Where they Twitter, start that whole, Instagram, you know, all that stuff. Twitter. Hashtag. Open. Yes. Hashtag release Matilda. Yes. Release Matilda. All right, cool. On that note, thanks everybody that's came through in the uh Jimmy Ace, Joseph, Tanner, Maddie. Thank you for coming by. Good to see you. Uh big up to my man uh Deuce that was in the building for a little bit. You know what I'm saying show the support. Love that. And uh whoever else was in there. We oh yeah, no nonsense. She was up in the building early. I she know, everybody was up out here. early. Everybody she was in the here. building early. She checked out. We love you know. Thank you for coming by. Everybody, once again, I can't stress enough. Share the show. Everybody in this chat room right now, I need y'all to share the show. Just just share it with your people. Uh, you know, you guys obviously are, you've probably hit the bell because you know when we make these these shows, but share this show and every other show that we do. Uh, don't forget to check out Saturday. We do have here on the IE Network, the Bench Warmers Sports Broadcast Show, Sports and Stuff. They talk, you know, hosted by Jimmy Ace, uh, you hey, know, hey, Jimmy, uh, hey, Jimmy. Hollywood. So Jimmy, I know I know you're still watching, but um, I'm just curious, and you can punch that room. Who who disappointed you most this weekend in the in the NFL, or who were you most impressed with? I was actually impressed with Brady. I'm real sorry about Breeze. I really want Breeze to go out with another ring before he really wraps it up. But yeah. I mean, th- does Brady have anything else left to prove? I mean, Frank. I mean, really, because I I'd be watching ESPN. And they always talking about. You know, homeboy on 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 first take. Well, you know, Brady's got this to prove. He's got this. He's under so much pressure. I'm like, why? Why is he under so much pressure? He is not under pressure. People, to me, Max he Keller. doesn't have anything to prove. Yeah, he, he you know, Max Kellman's a dummy when he talks about this. Max Kellman's a boxing expert. You listen to him when he talks about boxing. He he has nothing to prove. First of all, what he's already done, no one else has done. He's already made it to nine Super Bowls. I don't think anybody, any quarterback, nope. is there any nope. player has nope. made it to nine Hell, Super Bowls. Is there any owner that's got to <laughs> nine Super Bowls? 
Exactly. He's made it to nine Super Bowls. If he is lucky and blessed enough to make it this year, which I predicted, he will make it again. And he will have 10 Super Bowl appearances. There is no question he's the GOAT at that point. It said, uh, it, they said the other day, well, I watched it yesterday, that in the ninth, if he's played, tw- well, he's technically 20 years, but one year he was hurt. But in the 19 years that he has played as a starting quarterback, he has made the championship game 14 of those years. That's half unheard of. That's more than half his career. That's, That's unheard more than, of. That's more than quarters of his career. So I keep hearing Kellerman, and every every Friday they're talking about, well, Brady has disapproved because he's getting older. Yes, he is getting older, but has he skipped a beat? No. I, he said, I don't need New England. I don't mm-hmm. need Belichick. You know? He's he, proved he, it. Well, he's, he's already proved, proved that. that. He's got. He's won in the two, championship two playoff games, and now he's in the championship, the NFC championship. And where he's, Belichick at? Surprisingly, he's home. He's sitting yeah. home. Man, not surprising to me. We talked about that on the on the bench warmers. We said that you know people were fooled by the whole Belichick thing and mesmerized by it. Damn man, they're they're mesmerized you. By it. Yeah, damn it was man, like, they tell us how you really feel. Oh yeah, they, they were fooled by it, man. No, man. No, what? Oh, man, what you say? Look what Mary says. Like, uh, they have, uh, like, tell us how you really feel. <laughs> I'm from New Orleans, and I want to win, but he needs to finish that stuff, everything. Yeah, no, it's right. Um, yeah, Belichick is overrated. And, you know, you know, he's kind of overrated because of when, before he had Tom Brady, he was not a winning coach. So Tom Brady is now do not – this is the only time Tom Brady has ever not had Bill Belichick, and he's still winning. So there's your answer. And exactly. Bill Belichick is now losing. So there's your answer. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's cool. So next week we'll we'll get back with that. Y'all should come up with a list too, man. And spend the bros. Spend the bros. If you want who should be in it. Yeah, you know, we already said don't put the you can't put Denzel or the rock on the good guy side because we have reserved them as the villain. They're the villains of the film. Denzel being the main guy pulling all the strings and Dwayne Johnson being the muscle, being the Dwayne Johnson to be the guy who's out there in the trenches fighting with them, trying to stop them from doing whatever they're trying to do. And he's the one going to be in all the action scenes with them. But when it's all said and done and you get past Dwayne Johnson, whether he gets killed or whatever, you have to now answer to Denzel. Now you got to answer to my man. He go, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay, okay. I got my brother. My brother. My, 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 my brother. My yeah. man. That's yep, my man. So you got he's got he's got to get it. You got to answer to him now. So that's that's what's up. But everybody else on the other side, we'll put that together. And we'll get up with you. That's it, man. Thanks for coming out, y'all. Thanks for joining us. We'll get up with y'all next week. Peace out. Blessings. Peace.